Chapter 131, Feng Yu Heng, I will kill you. Feng Yu Heng immediately readjusted her emotions and returned her expression to normal. But even if she did this, it was still caught by two pairs of eyes. One belonged to Xiu An Tenming and the other to Xiu An Tan Hu. Have you been going to the barrack more often recently? Xiu An Tan Hu looked to the side and quietly said. At this time, Lord Ding and kowtowed to the Emperor one final time, signaling the end of his time as an imperial lord. Yes. Xiu An Tanming's expression did not sink, instead becoming slightly more dignified. In the hall, there were already people who helped Lord Ding and out. With this year's mid-autumn banquet, the only imperial lord of Da Shun was relieved of his duty. As for Wang Nuo, who had just been named as a groom, he also lost his position along with the rest of the Ding and family. All that was left to him was his ugly wife. The Bu family met with a disaster today. Thinking about it, that Bu Kong should be returning. I cannot help over at the military camp, so you be more careful. That girl I fear will not have many good days left. Fuh! Xiu An Ming snorted. When has she ever had good days? It's fine. Don't worry, seventh brother. Feng Yuhen naturally did not know what the two were talking about. She only noticed that the two of them had looked in her direction in concern, which caused her to feel a little warm inside. With the banquet having been disrupted to such a degree, there was no possibility of it continuing. Everyone stood up then knelt, waiting for the emperor to announce the end of the banquet. The emperor was also quite tired. Waving his hand, he dismissed everyone, but just as Feng Yuhen prepared to leave with everyone else, he called out, Heng girl, our head is hurting a little. Remain for a little while longer. Feng Yuhen did not know why the emperor wanted her to remain, but she could only stop and reply, yes. She then saw Feng Jinyuan's pleading appearance and knew that her father wanted for her to ask for forgiveness for Chen Yu. Feng Yuhen could not be bothered to deal with Chen Yu's matter. Although both were from the Feng family, it was clear that the imperial family had no intention of placing any guilt on her, she did not want to discuss it. Seeing Feng Yu Heng refused to look at him, Feng Jin Yuan became anxious and could not help but quietly call her, A hey Heng. Frowning, she glanced sideways at him and felt that this father was shameless. Based on Feng Jin Yuan's intelligence as a prime minister, it should have been impossible for him to not have seen through Chen Yu and King Le's plans. Yet, he still wanted the victim to go ask for forgiveness. This bias was truly great. Father. She spoke, her voice very quiet and without a hint of emotion, if that cat had appeared in my hands, what would have happened? Feng Jin Yuan was startled and could not respond for a while. When he looked at Feng Yu Heng again, he found that this daughter was already walking towards the stage. Atop the stairs, the emperor looked at her with a fatherly smile. At this very moment, Feng Jin Yuan felt that he himself was an outsider. That child was not his daughter at all, and she did not view him as a father in the slightest. He bowed and retreated, escaping Liu Li courtyard. Walking quickly to catch up with the crowd, he hid within it. The emperor merely glanced at Feng Jin Yuan's retreating figure before looking away. It was as though he had not seen anything, as he said to Feng Yu Heng, Heng girl, accompany us on for a walk. The moon of the mid-autumn banquet was very round. The distinction between the four seasons in Da Shan's capital were very clear. The cold wind on the night of the mid-autumn festival caused people to shiver from the cold. The emperor's attending eunuch Jiang Yuan gave a cloak to the emperor and had a palace servant give one to Feng Yuheng as well. She simply walked behind the emperor all the way to Winter Moon Palace's gates. The emperor finally came to a stop. Raising his hand, Jiang Yuan brought the servants that had been following and Huang Quan further away. This left just the emperor and Feng Yuheng alone. Feng Yuheng was a little curious about the emperor and imperial concubine Yan. An imperial concubine with such a personality was able to keep the emperor interested for so many years. If the two did not have a special story, she absolutely would not believe it. Tonight, the emperor had kept her behind then brought her to Winter Moon Palace's gates. Feng Yuhen secretly guessed that it was possible the emperor normally did not have anyone to speak to, 
especially when it came to imperial concubine Yun. Given Xu An Ming's personality, there was no way for the emperor to discuss personal matters with him. Thinking about it, there was only a future daughter-in-law that he could speak with. Feng Yu Heng advanced a couple steps with the idea of gossiping. Looking at the emperor, she waited for him to bring up his secret thoughts. Who knew that the emperor would actually turn around and look at her, directly asking, Ming's legs, can you fix them? Feng Yu Hen was stunned and took some time to gather herself before properly saying, of course I can fix them. Ha ha ha. The emperor suddenly laughed, we knew it. We knew that all those imperial doctors were worthless. It truly is the Yao family's younger generation that is most reliable. Feng Yu Hen blinked, Yao family's younger generation? Un, speaking about it this way is good too. Although she had not yet seen anyone from the Yao family, based on the memories of the body's original owner, the family far away in Huangzi was much more kind than the Feng family. Especially the maternal grandfather, Yao Xian, was someone that Feng Yu Hen really wanted to meet. The imperial doctors told us that Ming's legs could not be saved. We were truly saddened. The emperor's gaze once again turned in the direction of Winter Moon Palace. Muttering to himself, his voice became heavy, but, Ming told us that he would definitely be able to stand once more, as long as he married you. That is the reason we promised Ming he could marry the Feng family's daughter. Feng Yuheng understood. Thinking about it, in regards to this marriage, the emperor was unhappy about it at first. He only did it to allow Xu Aunt Ming to get better, otherwise, he would not have agreed. She thought for a long time and simply said, A Heng is Yao family's daughter. The emperor nodded, seemingly very satisfied with this answer, as his expression finally calmed down a little. Since the topic was on Xu Aunt and Ming's illness, Feng Yuhen really wanted to hear the emperor ask her if his other area could be fixed. After all, there were rumors floating about everywhere, and she did not receive a proper response from Xu Aunt and Ming. She always felt a little lost. But after waiting for a long time, the emperor only looked at Winter Moon Palace. He seemed to have no intention of bringing it up. Unable to endure, she asked. His highness face, that is unharmed. The emperor waved his hand, so long as you can fix Ming's legs, we will not need to worry about anything. Feng Yuheng also let out a sigh of relief. She had deliberately asked about the face under the golden mask, but the emperor's response had given her a certain amount of relief. Thinking about it, that area should be fine. The two did not speak any further. Feng Yu Heng accompanied the emperor in looking at Winter Moon Palace for a long time before the emperor decreed a return to his chamber. Feng Yu Heng was then invited by Mo Bu Fan to check on the empress one more time. She knew that treatment was not the main goal. Mo Bu Fan must have been wanting to get some more medical pills. The empress had been overly frightened. Calming medicines were things she naturally had, but she did not want to take them out just like that. Looking at Mobu Fan's expectant gaze, Feng Yuhen saluted the Empress on her bed and said, Today, A Hen came to the palace for the banquet and did not expect such things to happen. There were no preparations made for medicine. How about when the sun comes up, Sir Mo goes to Hundred Herb Hall to buy some? Mobu Fan did not know whether to laugh or cry. But this future princess you truly would not let slide any opportunity to increase her hundred herb hall's reputation. If people knew that even the empress went there to ask for medicine, who knows how popular that place would become. After being held up by the empress, when Feng Yuhen finally left the palace, the sky was already bright. Because there was a palace banquet last night, this morning's court session was cancelled. Upon exiting the palace, Feng Yuhen saw the Feng family's carriage parked outside. On the outside of the carriage, the word Feng was written clearly on a wooden board. The palace maid that escorted her out of the palace smiled and said, it must be that they are waiting to bring princess back home. Having been delayed in the palace for a night, Lord Feng must be quite anxious. The palace maid was merely engaging in some small talk. She knew nothing of what the Feng family was truly like but she knew that there was a daughter that did not return, so it was natural to prepare a carriage to pick her up. Feng Yuhen did not share this optimism. 
Turning her head, she saw that Feng Chen Yu and King Le were still knelt before the palace gates. Chen Yu's red dress was dirty and wrinkled. Her originally beautiful hair that cascaded down like a waterfall was now scattered and untidy. Having knelt for an entire night, her legs could no longer support her, and she was basically just sitting on the ground. The dark makeup used to darken her face was now splotched, as certain parts of her face returned to its original white, while other parts became even darker. Altogether, it looked like a ghoul's face. It did not match up with the rumors that had spread of the Feng family's daughter to the first wife looking like a goddess. Looking then at Kingla, her bare head was disgustingly exposed. The pustules on her head were covered in pus and some had leaked down onto her cheeks. She no longer had the strength to wipe them, so they just continued to leak. From her cheeks down to her neck, her entire collar was stained. But Kingla's consciousness was much more lively than Chen Yu's. Chen Yu's eyes both stared straight down at the ground and was without vigor for a long time. If she were not just outside the palace's gates, she would have fallen asleep long ago. As for Kingla, she was still completely upright. Her eyes filled with hate, as she glared towards the palace gates. Both her hands were balled up tightly into fists, and her face had a scurrily ferocious look. There was an old granny that kept watch over them to the side. While sipping tea, she watched King Le glared at the palace gates. Disdainful, she said, there is no point no matter how much you glare. You will never be able to set foot in this imperial palace ever again. From today onward, there will be no more Lord Dingen. King Le girl, you should hope that the palace quickly hands down a decree bringing your penance to an end. If you continue kneeling like this well, as a former child of royalty, how could your bones handle it? Regardless of whether the palace granny was punishing her or cursing her, it was something that happened quite easily. These few words spoke at Kingla's scars, and caused Kingla to tremble in anger. As for Chen Yu, the granny left her quite a bit of face, especially since the Feng Manor's carriage was parked just to the side. Lord Dingen had been demoted to a commoner, but that did not mean Prime Minister Feng had lost his power. The people of the palace knew what was appropriate and knew how to act accordingly. Although they treated King Le terribly, they did not even look in Chen Yu's direction. Feng Yuhen took a few steps towards where they were kneeling. The granny that had been watching over the two saw her coming over and quickly put the cup of tea on the table, stood up and trotted over to welcome her. Before she even got close, she put on a smile and sincerely said, This old servant pays respects to Princess Yu. The words Princess Yu caused Chen Yu and King Le both looked over. After this banquet and having experienced the personal approval of this future daughter-in-law by the Emperor and Empress, and having witnessed the Emperor allowed Feng Yuhen to directly call him Father Emperor, who still dared to not recognize her as the Ninth Prince's official princess. Feng Yuhen did not hold back. She watched the Granny perform a grand salute before slightly raising her hand, Granny. Please get up. Before the granny could stand up, a shrill woman's voice suddenly shrieked Feng Yu Heng. I will kill you. Chapter 132. Who did you say was a waste? This shout caused everyone to be startled. Huang Quan instantly appeared before Feng Yu Heng to protect her, while King Le, who had been kneeling on the ground, immediately stood up and pulled a hairpin from Feng Chen Yu's head and stabbed towards Feng Yu Heng. Feng Yuhen did not even bother dodging, as she watched the crazed King Le meet up with the now active Huang Quain. In the time it took to smile, King Le was kicked away by Huang Quain. This was the first time Feng Chen Yu saw the servant take action. She previously knew that Prince Yu's palace had gifted two servants that were capable in martial arts, but she never thought they would be so good. She stared blankly at Feng Yuhen and saw a coldness and courage in this little sister's eyes. She suddenly felt that she did not recognize this person. Regardless of whether it was the former daughter to the first wife Feng Yu Heng or the more recent daughter of a concubine Feng Yu Heng, it seemed as though neither should be like this. She could not say precisely what felt off about Feng Yu Heng, but she felt a kind of despair growing at the bottom of her heart. This little sister, it seemed she could not defeat her. King Le had knelt for a night and was now kicked by Huang Quain. She had fainted long before she was sent flying by the kick. 
When she landed there was only the sound of the landing. There was not a single person that went over to help her. The granny did not mind Huang Quain taking action and kicking someone. She was someone who had been at the palace for a long time, so she had met Huang Quain and Wang Quan before. Imperial concubine Yun's former maid servants, who dared to offend them. She smiled and looked at Feng Yuheng, completely ignoring the fainted King La. She politely said, is princess leaving the palace? Would you like this old servant to arrange a carriage to send you? As she said this, she looked towards the Feng family's carriage. Feng Yuheng smirked. It seemed that the palace's grannies were all experts at managing the gates, thus she was not modest, that being the case, I will trouble granny. What is princess saying? The granny quickly saluted before leaving to arrange a carriage. When Feng Yuhen returned home in the palace's carriage, it was already seven in the morning. After bringing Xiang Rong back to the manor, Feng Jinyuan told everyone about the happenings of the palace banquet. Presently, Chen Yu was still knelt outside the palace's gates. Originally, the matriarch wanted Feng Jinyuan to go see her, but Feng Jinyuan felt that if he went, the Empress Anger would flare up once more. Thus he could only send a carriage over to pick her up, while he remained in the manor, silently waiting. Unfortunately, the daughter that returned in the morning was not the Chen Yu he worried most about. It was Feng Yu Heng. Did you see your eldest sister? The moment Feng Yu Heng entered the manor's gates, Feng Jin Yuan directly went over and asked this question. She was slightly startled. She had not slept for an entire night, so her consciousness was a little off. Feng Jin Yuan's question caused her become furious daughter remained at the palace for the night, yet father does not even ask once how I am. Feng Jin Yuan frowned and very impolitely said, haven't you returned just fine? Your eldest sister was punished with protracted kneeling outside the palace? How can that be compared to being kept behind to treat the emperor? She frowned and looked towards Feng Jin Yuan. Her mind had only one word that consistently rampaged in her mind, shameless. I did not see her. She could not be bothered with wasting any words. With Huang Quain in tow, she turned and walked towards Tongsheng Pavilion. Feng Jin Yuan also had not slept the entire night, so his temper was quite explosive. Seeing Feng Yu Heng actually had the courage to speak to him like this, he furiously shouted, Stop this instant. How could Feng Yu Heng bother paying any attention to him? Pretending as though she had not heard him, she continued along her way. But before she could walk very far, a servant trotted over and stopped her second young miss. The matriarch is inviting you to see your courtyard. Her words were polite and full of kindness. It was completely different from Feng Jin Yuan's attitude. Feng Yu Heng nodded. Bringing Huang Quain, she turned and followed the servant towards Xiuya courtyard. Right before departing, she said to Feng Jin Yuan, if father still has any questions, how about going to pay respects to grandmother with a Heng? Eldest sister is the Feng family's daughter to the first wife, but she lowered herself to act as Kingla's servant. I really do not know what our family's position is in the capital. Feng Jin Yuan's face alternated back and forth between being white and red. Presently, Feng Yuhen was already following the servant and walking towards Xiuya courtyard. Helpless, he followed, stomping along. Also worrying about Chen Yu but in a different way, the matriarch's entire Xiuya courtyard was beaming with joy because Feng Yuhen had returned to the manor. Granny Zhao was the first to greet her, not even taking note of Feng Jin Yuan behind her. She directly saluted Feng Yu Heng, this old servant pays respects to second young miss. Second young miss has been busy all night over at the palace and must be terribly tired. Before the sun even came up, the matriarch had some pigeon soup to help second young miss recover. Feng Yu Heng smiled brightly and said to Granny Zhao, I truly have trouble grandmother with worrying. In this manner, it truly is grandmother that loves me most. Granny Zhao quickly invited her into the hall and followed up with what she had said, the matriarch really loves second young miss. Not only did she prepare a pigeon soup, she even called for the capital's best tailor. She was waiting for second young miss to return to the manor to make new clothes. Oh? Feng Yuhen was puzzled, 
Why is there such a rush to make new clothes? While they were speaking, the two had already entered the main hall. The matriarch was currently seated on the main seat. With a smiling face, she looked at Feng Yu Heng and took the initiative in responding to her question. R.A. Heng won the phoenix hairpin, so we naturally must make a set of clothing to suit it. So it was for that reason. Feng Yu Heng raised the corner of her lips and bowed towards the matriarch, Granddaughter pays respects to Grandmother. Granddaughter has kept Grandmother worried. This is Granddaughter's misdeed. The matriarch quickly sent a look to Granny Zhao, and Granny Zhao went up and helped Feng Yu Heng up. The matriarch then said, Wei has a hen done anything wrong? Being able to be awarded by the Emperor and the Empress is your good fortune. It is also our Feng Manor's good fortune. You being able to win gave our Feng family a good amount of face. Me and your father are both very grateful of you. Really? Feng Yu Heng slightly turned around and looked at Feng Jin Yu An, perhaps father does not feel this gained us face. Fourth, Feng Jin Yu An forcefully flicked his sleeve, not taking the time to pay respects to the matriarch. He went and directly sat on a chair to the side then glared at Feng Yu Heng, angrily saying, you only know to think of yourself, but you completely disregard your eldest sister. My Feng family does not have a child like you. Jin Yu An. The matriarch feared that Feng Jin Yu An's attitude would annoy Feng Yu Heng and quickly spoke, A Heng is a Heng. Gaining face is also just gaining face. What are you bringing up Chen Yu for? Seeing Feng Jin Yu An was still angry, she continued, What sort of thing is the phoenix hairpin? Now that the emperor has awarded it to our A Heng, for our Feng manner, is this not a matter of heavenly good fortune? You as a father, if you don't praise her, then forget it, but how can you still scold her? Hearing the matriarch bring up the phoenix hairpin, Feng Jin Yu An's anger died down a little. Speaking truthfully, the matter of Feng Yu Heng acquiring the phoenix hairpin had also caused him a great shock. Especially how Feng Yu Heng had shot out the three arrows. No only did it completely extinguish Bu Nishang's spirit, it also caused everyone present to be surprised. No matter what, he could not understand. How could Feng Yu Heng have undergone such a drastic change over three years in the mountains? If it were just the personality, then it would be understandable, however, her skill in martial arts, where did that come from? Reigning in his thoughts, he turned his gaze towards Feng Yu Heng and calmed down slightly. A Hen winning the Phoenix hairpin is naturally glory for the Feng family, but whenever he thought of Chen Yu, he felt uncomfortable. Your eldest sister is currently still kneeling outside the palace's gates. Having gained face at the banquet, why did you not request forgiveness for your eldest sister? Feng Yu Hen took a deep breath. She was very rarely angered, but facing the shameless father of the body's original owner, she really wanted to go forward and fiercely slap him father, as a person, one needs to know satisfaction. I may have been praised by the emperor and the empress, but if I did not know what was good and tried to gain a foot after getting an inch, perhaps the Feng family would be able to protect nothing. Her eyes slowly became more lively, I won the phoenix hairpin, and the emperor personally awarded it, while the empress personally placed it on my head. The emperor also permitted me to call him father emperor. Despite such glory, the Feng family does not even send a carriage for me. This matter, I fear has already become known within the palace. The matriarch was stunned, what carriage? Feng Jin Yuan was a little embarrassed, but he also felt he had done nothing wrong, thus he said, son sent a carriage to the palace's gates to pick up Chen Yu. Then how did A Hen come back? The matriarch seemed to have thought of something, you only sent a carriage to pick up Chen Yu? who had been punished with protracted kneeling, yet you did not send another one to pick up Hei Heng. Feng Jin Yuan lowered his head in silence. Feng Yu Heng said, responding to grandmother, the granny at the palace's gates saw that granddaughter was truly pitiful, so she prepared a palace carriage to send granddaughter back to the manor. Otherwise perhaps granddaughter would have needed to walk back. Idiot. The matriarch angrily slammed her cane on the ground. Chen Yu was personally punished by the Emperor. A Hen was personally praised by the Emperor. The difference between these two people, how can you not understand? 
Feng Jinyuan was a little irritated from being cursed by the matriarch and could not help but rebuke, how did I not understand? But even when giving praise, she is still just a concubine's daughter. The ninth prince is also a waste with no hopes of attaining the throne. The daughter my Feng family needs to protect, mother should not have forgotten, right? With this reminder, this always easily swayed matriarch began to feel her heart sway once more. That's right. She was only happy that Feng Yuhen had won the phoenix hairpin, but she had forgotten that the ninth prince had no hope of attaining the throne. For a while, the main hall's atmosphere became more and more oppressive. The matriarch and Feng Jinyuan's thoughts changed rapidly. Especially the matriarch, her eyes spun and her thoughts were complicated. Last night, when she listened to Feng Jinyuan speak of what happened at the banquet, her entire being had been attracted to the phoenix hairpin. She knew that acquiring this phoenix hairpin was akin to receiving everything under heaven. The emperor had yet to announce an heir, but at this year's banquet, he awarded the phoenix hairpin. Was this not just disguising who he determined was to be crown prince? For her, regardless of whether it was Feng Chen Yu or Feng Yu Heng, or even if it were Xiang Rong or Fen Dai, so long as it was a child from the Feng family that won the phoenix hairpin, it was a matter of great glory for the Feng family. Thus she did not worry about the Chen Yu who was still kneeling at the palace's gates, instead fawning wholeheartedly on Feng Yu Heng. Now, However, her son had given her this reminder. The matriarch felt that acquiring this phoenix hairpin was not as great as she had thought. She subconsciously turned her gaze towards Feng Yu Heng. She wanted to ask if the emperor had said anything, since she had not returned all night. However, she saw Feng Yu Heng's face was dark and her gaze sharp like a dagger. Her body rose from the chair, as she stepped towards Feng Jin Yuan. Feng Jinyuan only felt an unprecedented sense of oppression rushing over from Feng Yuhen's footsteps. Just like the three arrows that had been shot at the banquet, he now felt as though he were the bull's eye. As Feng Yuhen got closer and closer, his breathing stopped. Farther finally, she arrived before Feng Jinyuan and stopped. Leaning forward, her small face appeared compelling just now, who did you say was a waste? Chapter 133 Second young miss is underhanded. Feng Jinyuan previously only felt that this daughter was a little different than three years ago, when she left the manor. Ignoring how she had become a little colder, she had also become fiercer. He knew that she knew martial arts, and he knew that her medical skills were even more impressive, however, he never thought it would be like this. He now began to feel a fear towards this daughter. Subconsciously leaning back, he wanted to increase the distance between himself and Feng Yu Heng, but she was already leaning against the arm rest. The oppressive and frightening feeling that Feng Yu Heng brought did not decrease in the slightest. A hey Heng. The matriarch saw that something was not quite right and wanted to say a few comforting words, but when she saw Feng Yu Heng's cold expression, a cold sweat broke out. After calling out, she did not know what else she should say. For a while, the atmosphere in the hall was very ominous. The matriarch and Feng Jinyuan were both scared stiff by Feng Yu Heng. But to a person with a discerning eye, the two were slightly trembling, and Feng Jinyuan's eyebrow was twitching rapidly. Father. Finally, Feng Yu Heng spoke once more, you have been the prime minister for many years, yet you do not know what sorts of things can be said and what sorts of things can't be said. You also do not know what sorts of things can be said in front of certain people, and what sorts of things should not be said in front of certain people. Daughter truly does not understand, how did such a stupid person become the current court's prime minister? Yu Feng Jinyuan was both embarrassed and angry. He was the current court's first rank high official. Aside from the emperor and the few princes, when had someone ever dared to insult him like this? Yet now. He had been derided by his own daughter. How could he tolerate losing face like this? Evil creature! He glared at Feng Yu Heng as he trembled, his face pale and his eyes bulging. But how could Feng Yu Heng be frightened by him? This father being shameless was something she could endure, and she could even remember to leave him a shred of dignity and respect owed to an elder. However, him insulting Xu Aunt Ming, this, she could not endure. 
If daughter is an evil creature, then what is the meaning behind insulting your future son-in-law? If you do not act like a father, then do not expect me to act like a daughter. I am your father. Feng Jinyuan felt this daughter have never looked at him as a father. Three years ago, he had not treated the mother and daughter well, but Yao Shi and her two children were now back at the manor. As the younger generation, Feng Yuhen should be feeling grateful, so why did she have such a fierce vengeful heart? That's right, you are the father. Feng Yuhen's face inched forward just a little bit more, leaving Feng Jinyuan with no place to run. But father, do not forget. You are a citizen of Dia Shan and one of the emperor's officials. For an official, insulting the imperial family is a crime that can result in the exterminating of the entire family. Father, do you want the entire Feng family to follow you to the chopping block? Her words were powerful and effective, leaving Feng Jinyuan speechless and causing the matriarch's face to turn pale white in fear. Standing to the side, Granny Zhao's heart nearly stopped completely. She silently thought to herself, this second young miss is underhanded, too underhanded. Seeing that the matriarch was struggling to breathe, Granny Zhao had no other choice but to do her best and break the deadlock, matriarch, you must take care of your body. Feng Yuhen heard the sincerity and raised the corner of her lips. She then fiercely glared at Feng Jin Yuan, her gaze carrying a warning look. But very quickly, she straightened her body and retracted her forceful gaze. When she turned towards the matriarch, her expression seemed very concerned grandmother, what happened? The matriarch was temporarily panicked and felt that what she had just seen was not real. Feng Yuhen had not acted fiercely towards Feng Jinyuan. She was still the good granddaughter who would treat her well and could treat her illness. Granny Zhao continuously helped the matriarch catch her breath and saw Feng Yuheng rush forward. She took the initiative and said, Second young miss, come take a look. It seems the matriarch swallowed some air and can't get it back up. When she spoke with Feng Yuheng, she did not dare look up at her. Her scalp felt numb in short spurts, as she feared that Feng Yuheng would bring out the same expression she had earlier. But fortunately, Feng Yuheng was already completely different from earlier. Now standing there was just a granddaughter who was concerned about her grandmother's health. She reached out her hand and patted the back of the matriarch's neck. They did not know what spot she patted, but the breath the matriarch could not exhale immediately came out. Grandmother absolutely must take care of your healthy. Even if father provokes your anger, you must endure. These words pushed the blame for the earlier discomfort on Feng Jinyuan. What could the matriarch say? She changed her mind, as she nodded and acknowledged the things Feng Yuhen said. In any case, the things Feng Jinyuan had said were indeed a mark on his position as the Prime Minister. If the relationship of father and daughter were cast aside, Feng Yuhen's lecture was correct. Jin Yuan, you must be careful of what you say. The matriarch bit the bullet and said it. Seeing Feng Jinyuan slightly nod, she finally calmed down a little. She then looked at Feng Yuhen and saw that she still appeared concerned, so she mustered up her courage and said, Do not get mad at your father. He did not sleep for an entire night and has been missing you and your sister. Feng Yuhen smiled, That's right. Father loves being anxious over us daughters, and A Heng was very moved by it, but I do not know why eldest sister wore a set of red clothes to act as King Le's servant. Did she not think she might implicate father and implicate the Feng manner? She spoke without a hint of emotion. It was the cold expression she was accustomed to having before others. Cold and indifferent, it caused people to feel a chill. The matriarch feared that Feng Jinyuan would annoy Feng Yuheng if he spoke again, so she quickly tried to mediate, your eldest sister is also anxious because she can't enter the palace? This is all because of that Chen Shi. Even with her death, she did not give her children anything good. Feng Jinyuan subconsciously followed along and nodded. He did not dare look at Feng Yuheng, as he followed the matriarch's words, Our entire family has been implicated by that vile woman. Feng Yuheng's eyes held some contempt. Placing all the blame on the scapegoat, this was the Feng family. At the time, a young servant hurried in and saluted the three then said, Matriarch, Master. Eldest young miss has returned to the manor. 
Hearing these words, Feng Jinyuan immediately stood up, Chen Yu returned to the manor. The matriarch also asked, How is she? Is she hurt? The young servant responded very properly, Eldest young miss returned with the support of the servants. It seems that there is an injury to her legs, and she has returned to her courtyard to rest. Feng Jinyuan hurriedly said, Send someone to get a doctor. As he said this, he walked out, I will go over and take a look. Seeing him quickly leave, the matriarch could not sit still. Standing up from her seat, she looked at Feng Yuheng and used a neutral tone to say, Let us also go and take a look. Feng Yuheng nodded, taking the initiative in helping the matriarch, If grandmother is going, granddaughter naturally must accompany. But grandmother absolutely must not get angry with father. Causing trouble for your body is absolutely not good. The matriarch felt her head go numb from listening to Feng Yu Heng. She had clearly been frightened by her, but how did it become her getting angry with her son? This granddaughter telling such lies with a straight face was something she finally witnessed. Feng Chen Yu returning to the manor alerted everyone in the manor. The concubine mothers and young misses who were going towards Xiuya courtyard to pay respects to the matriarch now turned in the direction of Chen Yu's courtyard. Everyone knew that with Chen Yu's return, the master and matriarch would definitely go take a look. The matriarch was the one who walked the slowest. When Feng Yu Hen and Granny Zhao supported her into Chen Yu's room, Yao She, An She, Han She, Jin Zhen, and Xiang Rong were already present. Dark circles appeared on Yao Shi's eyes. She clearly had not slept all night. Feng Yu Hen knew that she was worrying about her, so she sent a comforting smile. Yao Shi finally let out a sigh of relief and relaxed. At this time, Chen Yu was seated on her bed, her face thin and pale, as she sobbed. Feng Jin Yuan stood at her side. Cursing her was not right, nor was doting on her. Pacing back and forth, he did not know what he should say. This daughter was the one he had placed a great deal of hope in. He had clearly laid out a perfectly good path for her, yet who knew that she would fail to live up to expectations and do such a thing? Previously, she could not enter the palace because of Chen Shi, and this could not be blamed on Chen Yu. Yesterday, however, the matter at the banquet, Chen Yu had truly caused too much trouble. Feng Yu Heng saw that nobody spoke and could not help but lightly sight wise. Filled with uncertainty, she said, yesterday at the palace, it was not convenient to ask, but now that eldest sister has returned to the manor, younger sister is curious and must ask. Eldest sister, what are you dressing up like this to enter the palace for? Everyone felt that Chen Yu's red clothes stood out too much. Now that Feng Yu Heng asked, they looked at her with doubt. Because of what happened to Fen Dai, Han Shi always felt a great deal of grief. Her personality was no longer as charming as before. Now, when she looked at the daughters of the manor, she felt it was them that ruined Fen Dai's future. She wished that she could tear the daughter of the first wife and the daughters of the other concubines apart, so Fen Dai would become the manor's sole child. Feng Yu Hen's words and Chen Yu's red clothes succeeded in agitating the most sensitive of her nerves. Han Shi suddenly began giggling, but it was no longer as pretty as it once was. Instead, it was a bit more gruesome, eldest young Miss Mother dying must have made her happy beyond belief. An Shi frowned tightly and looked at Han Shi. After a long while, she quietly said to Yao She, this woman has most likely gone insane. The matriarch also thought this way. With Chen Yu crying louder and louder, she slammed her cane on the ground and pointed at Han Shi, Servants. Take this maniac and send her back to her courtyard. Han Shi did not argue. She simply continued giggling. This giggling caused Feng Jin Yuan to feel upset. It had been too long since he went to Han Shi's courtyard. Ever since Fen Dai left the manor, he always felt a little sorry for Han Shi. He even did his best to avoid her, but he did not think that Han Shi would actually become like this. Chen Yu. As Han Shi's laughter drifted further away, the matriarch finally spoke, although concubine mother Han is not worth listening to, it's just that. You sneaking into the palace is excusable, but this set of red clothing, who is it that you wore it for? Before the matriarch could finish speaking, 
Feng Yuhen interrupted and cut straight to the point, Chen Yu wearing such clothes was for the sake of getting someone's attention. Feng Jinyuan was not stupid. After returning to the manor, he had pondered Chen Yu's actions for a while. The seventh prince, Xiu Antan who was otherworldly. He very rarely interacted with the officials. He had also heard people say that the seventh prince liked the color red. Following this line of thinking, Chen Yu wearing a red dress was explained. But Chen Yu had not seen the seventh prince many times. Even if she secretly made a vow Yu, she would not have a chance in such a short time to investigate anything about his likes. Then it must be that someone deliberately said it for Chen Yu to hear, which caused her to wear such clothes to enter the palace. He swiftly turned his eyes towards Feng Yu Heng. Before he could speak, Feng Yu Heng took the initiative in meeting his gaze and said, Da Shun values filial piety the most. Eldest sister committing such a taboo, how will father punish her? Oh right, eldest sister also stole the multicolored stone that father was to present to the empress, nearly causing father to be punished with death. I truly do not know how father offended eldest sister. If this problem is not resolved, it will eventually become enmity. Chapter 134, Help the Emperor, Control the World In regards to the things that happened during the palace banquet, the other members of the Feng family were not too clear. Feng Jinyuan leaned towards siding with Chen Yu, so he was naturally a little provoked by those words. Now that Feng Yuhen had said this, everyone finally knew. So it seemed that not only had Chen Yu worn a set of red clothes and snuck into the palace, she had also dared to steal the multicolored stone. And she looked at Chen Yu and helplessly shook her head, eldest young miss wanted to enter the palace is understandable. But why do you want to harm husband? It must be known that they were before the emperor and the empress. If there were the slightest mistake, then the punishment would have been death. Everyone followed along and nodded. Feng Jinyuan knew deep down that Chen Yu originally wanted to harm Feng Yu Heng. Unfortunately, her ideas were simple and were seen through by Feng Yu Heng. It was father that misplaced things. Do not falsely accuse your eldest sister. Feng Jinyuan said this and originally wanted to glare at Feng Yu Heng, but he recalled the fear he felt at Xu Ya courtyard and lowered his gaze. Feng Yu Heng put on a troubled face and looked at Feng Jinyuan saying, why does father such things? A hen is just the daughter to a concubine. How could I have the courage to falsely accuse eldest sister? Where does father want to send a hen to? Yu Feng Jinyuan felt it was harder and harder to understand the words coming out of this daughter's mouth. This daughter was somehow very similar to the ninth prince, being able to say black is white and a square is a circle all without blinking a single time. Feng Yu Heng looked at her father's ever-changing face and felt that this was quite funny. The dignified Prime Minister willfully continued to manage the affairs of the family poorly. He believed that a husband devoting himself fully to the country was good, but he did not know that if the family was unhappy, nothing was possible. Yao Shi stood next to An Shi and watched as her daughter went blow for blow with Feng Jin Yuan. As though she had not seen anything, she would occasionally say something quietly to An Shi, completely ignoring this matter. And she also found this surprising. It seems that three years in the Northwest had not just changed Feng Yu Heng, it had also changed Yao Shi. Father. Chen Yu, who had been sitting on the bed, finally spoke. The black makeup had been removed from her face, leaving just a pale white. Recently, mother is no longer on the mortal coil. Chen Yu's position as daughter to the first wife does not really matter. Would father give this position to second sister? Chen Yu Chen Yu will not fight for it. When she said these words, a couple of tears slowly dripped down her face and fell to her blanket. This sight caused Feng Jin Yuan to truly hold her dear. The matriarch sighed and said, What sort of things are you saying? The daughter to the first wife is the daughter to the first wife. What sort of logic is there in changing it all the time? The matriarch felt regret the instant these words came out. She knew that she had made a mistake, as she looked around the room. Aside from Chen Yu and Feng Jin Yu An, everyone looked towards her, their gazes all saying the same thing, is the Feng family's daughter to the first wife something that is changed all the time? 
The matriarch turned her away from everyone. Chen Yu paused for a while then took a deep breath and spoke loudly, Father, Chen Yu no longer has anything. This position as daughter of the first wife, it is fine if I do not have it. Nonsense. Feng Jinyuan became furious, you are the Feng family's daughter to the first wife. This point will never change. But, there are no buts. Feng Jinyuan warned Chen Yu, you have not lost anything. Remember, however it was in the past, it will continue to be in the future. Everything you have lost, you must seek to gain it back. A light flashed in Chen Yu's eyes, as she looked at Feng Jinyuan with expectation, then the phoenix hairpin, fuh. Feng Yu Hen sneered impolitely. So she was waiting for this chance. Chen Yu continued, every word she said sounding reasonable, everyone knows what the phoenix hairpin represents. That hairpin was fine while it remained in the palace, but now that it has come out of the palace what would it make the third prince think? Saying it like this, Feng Jinyuan could not help but ponder. What Chen Yu had said was not wrong. What the phoenix hairpin represented was something everyone knew. Feng Chen Yu had the aspect of the phoenix, and this was not some secret. Although it was not fully disclosed, there were plenty of people in a small group who knew about it. Now that the phoenix hairpin had landed in Feng Yuheng's hands, what would the third prince, whom the Feng family had decided to support, think about it? Feng Jinyuan subconsciously looked towards Feng Yuheng and happened to see her taunting gaze looking over at him. Not waiting for him to speak, Feng Yuheng took the initiative and said, Father shouldn't be wanting me to give the phoenix hairpin to eldest sister, right? Yao Shi could no longer endure watching this and said, that is something the emperor personally award. How could it be transferred to someone else? Feng Jinyuan did not dare glare at Feng Yuheng, but he did dare glare at Yao She, as a woman, what do you understand? When did you get a turn to speak? At the time when the Feng family carried my mother into the manor on her palanquin. Has father forgotten? Feng Yuheng's face revealed a gloomy look once more. Feng Jinyuan did not dare look at her but he was still angry, so he could not help but shout, the time was that time. What? Feng Yuhen was angry, it seems that in the future, when father says something, just listening to it for the moment is enough. Later on, it can't be taken as truth. Hey Heng. The matriarch could not longer endure watching, don't get angry with your father. Her voice was not loud, and it clearly was without much confidence. Feng Yuhen smiled towards the matriarch, then give us a judgment, grandmother. What judgment? Feng Jinyuan sat next to Chen Yu's bed. As he comforted Chen Yu, he said in a self-serving manner, it is in your hands, so it is yours. You can obviously transfer it to someone else. Is father going to come steal it? Feng Yuhen took a couple steps forward and looked at Feng Jinyuan. She felt this matter was very funny father stealing daughter's things. It truly would be a fantastic tale. Like this, everything belonging to A Heng has been gifted by someone. Even the courtyard was a gift from someone else. Father, if you are going to persist with this way of thinking, you may as well steal it all. As she said this, she looked towards Chen Yu, eldest sister, simply wanting a phoenix hairpin is no fun. That Tong Sheng pavilion of mine is much better than this courtyard of yours. How about you steal that as well? Impudent. Feng Jinyuan was so angry that his lungs were on the verge of bursting, how did I end up having a daughter like you? Well, this matter is something you cannot blame me for. Feng Yuhen curled her lips into a sneer, which made Feng Jinyuan's face turn bright red, at the time you gave birth to me, you did not discuss anything with me. Now that you feel regret, who can you blame? Feng Jinyuan turned his head away. He wanted to scold Feng Yuheng, but when the words reached his lips, he swallowed them back down. He truly did not have the courage to continue speaking with this daughter. There were times he truly wondered if she was actually his child. His impression of Feng Yuheng was completely different. He turned and comforted Chen Yu, don't argue with her. Do not worry, what is yours will sooner or later become yours. Chen Yu wiped her tears and nodded, but she heard Feng Yuhen say, Is that so? Father, you had best not regret it. After saying this, 
She turned towards the matriarch and bowed, Aheng is not liked here and will return first. Grandmother, take more care of your body. Tomorrow, Aheng will see how you are when I come to pay respects. The matriarch's heart relaxed a little. Although this granddaughter was a bit prickly, she still treated her well. The matriarch originally liked Chen Shi for gifting her jewels. After Feng Yuhen returned, she slowly began to bore of those things and also began to look and see if Feng Yuhen was giving her any exotic medicines. The matriarch sighed with some emotion. Watching Feng Yuhen's back, she then looked at the still sobbing Chen Yu. Finally, her gaze landed on Xiang Rong. But she was startled when she looked. She did not know when it happened, but she could see a trace of similar to Feng Yuhen on Xiang Rong's face. The coldness, the ruthlessness and the despair. And she noticed the matriarch looking closely at Xiang Rong and felt a little shocked. Gently walking forward a couple steps, she blocked the matriarch's line of sight. Xiang Rong also slightly raised her head, the coldness becoming even more apparent in her eyes. She had always known that this family was apathetic. She had seen it time and time again, and she had been disappointed time and time again. This time, however, she began to lose all hope. She came out from behind and she's back and bowed the matriarch. Completely ignoring Feng Jinyuan, she chased after Feng Yuheng. But before she could get very far, a voice shouted from outside an imperial decree has arrived. The people of the Feng family were very shocked. Feng Jinyuan was the first to stand up, as he nervously glanced at Chen Yu. Chen Yu was also afraid. She had knelt outside the palace's gates for an entire night. Heavens knew if the emperor and the empress felt they had not vented their anger and had sent an imperial decree to punish her. Father she trembled as she spoke. Lightly tugging on Feng Jinyuan's sleeve, her white face appeared very pitiful. Feng Jinyuan patted the back of her hand, daughter, do not worry. Father is the prime minister. Whatever the emperor says, it will not be too extreme. Remain in the room for now. Father will go out and take a look. With Feng Jinyuan taking the lead, everyone from the Feng Manor, except Chen Yu, went to the front yard. They left late. When they arrived, Feng Yuhen was already there and talking with the eunuch that came to deliver the decree. Feng Jinyuan was startled upon seeing the eunuch. Jiang Yuan? The imperial decree was actually sent by Jiang Yuan? Eunuch Yuan also has not rested for the entire night, yet you have come to deliver a decree. You truly have worked hard. Jiang Yuan was the eunuch at the emperor's side. Normally speaking, if there was nothing important, he would not personally deliver a decree. Today, however, he had come to Feng Manor. It was truly unknown what sort of imperial decree had come. Feng Jinyuan quickly went forward. When he reached his side, he wanted to exchange greetings, however, the jovially chatting Jiang Yuan immediately became expressionless. Shaking the imperial decree, he announced, Feng family's second young miss, Feng Yuhen to receive the decree. Feng Jinyuan was startled. It was not for Feng Chen Yu? The matriarch also glanced in Feng Yuhen's direction. Intuition told her that this was definitely a commendation. Ever since Feng Yuhen returned to the capital, she had never fallen once. When had anything ever gone poorly? What news had been bad news? Now that an imperial decree had come, what could it be? Everyone in the Feng family knelt along with Feng Jinyuan. Jiang Yuan opened the imperial decree and read it out in an official tone. The words were still those same words, and the order was still the same. In the end, it was nothing more than recognition of her magnificent skills with a bound arrow during the banquet. But when he had read halfway, an imperial guard who had been behind Jiang Yuan came forward, a bow in hand. Da Shun country's sole treasure Bao, Hu Yi's bow. From this moment onward, it will belong to Feng family's second young miss, Feng Yu Heng. The one receiving the bow may enter the military's barracks, assist the three armies, aid the emperor and command the world. Everyone let out an uproar. Even Feng Yuhen was stunned. Raising her head, she looked at the bow in surprise. The body was made of cold black jade and string made of ice cicada one. Set with many colorful gems, 
when it was held in someone's hands, the entire thing became brighter. It was as though there was a layer of light on it. It was divine and mysterious. Princess, receive the degree and the bow. Zhang Yuan gestured for the guard to bring the bow over to Feng Yuheng, this is something personally gifted by the emperor. Would princess please take care of it? Also, there is something else the emperor wished to inform princess. The phoenix hairpin, like the Huyi bow, is one of Da Shun's treasures. Not only should princess take good care of them, they may not be transferred to another person. Anyone who covets the phoenix hairpin will suffer the same punishment as if it were stolen. One, not sure what to call it, so I went with a literal translation. Chapter 135, The Empress Gift With an imperial decree, Chen Yu's dreams of acquiring the phoenix hairpin became completely crushed. Feng Yuheng raised both hands above her head and heard the imperial guard heavily say, Princess, you must take care of it. After saying this, he placed the bow in Feng Yuheng's hands. Feng Yuheng received the Huyi bow and felt that it was extremely heavy. If she had not prepared herself beforehand, perhaps she would not have been able to hold it. When she raised her head once more, she saw an approving look from the Imperial Guard. She already knew that this Huyi bow was an extraordinary thing. Sure enough, seeing that she held the bow in her hands, Zhang Yuan also nodded and breathed a sigh of relief. After that, he once again announced, the Huyi Bao is a relic of Da Shun. The Bao is made of cold black jade and has a weight of 186 Jin. The founding emperor of Da Shun used this Bao to kill the enemy leader and established the foundations of our Da Shun country. Ever since that moment, the founding emperor declared that the owner of this Bao, regardless of gender, may enter and leave any military camp within Da Shun, may assist in commanding the three armies and help the emperor in keeping peace in the world. Feng Yuhen stared at Zhang Yuan, her lips curving into a smile. She could practically see the emperor and Xuan Taming giggling while looking at this Hu Yi Bao and thinking of giving it to her. Feng Yuhen knew that the triple arrow shot she revealed at the banquet was a surprise to everyone. Even in the eyes of Xuan Taming, her value would increase. If the emperor truly were acting solely for his son's benefit, then he would obviously understand that only Feng Yuhen was worthy of his most beloved son. After he finished speaking, Zhang Yuan looked at Feng Yuhen then smiled and asked her, Has Princess remembered it all? Feng Yuhen nodded, A Heng has remembered it and thanks His Majesty for His Imperial Grace. Holding the bow, she kowtowed. Zhang Yuan was very satisfied with Feng Yuhen's actions. When he then looked towards Feng Jin Yuan, he found that this Lord Prime Minister had a face filled with uncertainty. He silently laughed to himself. This mediocre Prime Minister had been kept around for many years, believing that he had done a good job in protecting the Feng Manor. What he did not know, however, was that the Emperor had stopped regarding him as important the moment the Feng family chased the Yao family's daughter from her position as head wife. Eunuch, please come to the hall and enjoy a cup of hot tea. After Feng Yuhen received the imperial degree and the bow, everyone in the Feng Manor also stood up. The matriarch took the initiative in inviting Zhang Yuan while shooting a look in Feng Jin Yuan's direction. In truth, there was no need for the matriarch to give him this look. Feng Jin Yuan obviously understood that he had to curry favor with Zhang Yuan. But this Zhang Yuan had been able to steadily stay at the emperor's side for many years. How could he be so easy for the officials to curry favor with? Even for a prince, whether they were distant or near, he was able to clearly distinguish. As for the matriarch's invitation, Zhang Yuan politely waved his hand, saying, Many thanks, elderly madam. We still must return and report to the emperor, so we will not be staying and causing trouble. Oh right as he spoke, he looked towards Feng Jin Yuan, when we left, we saw another group also heading in the Feng Manor's direction. After asking around, we discovered it was the Empress that sent them to give something to the Feng family's eldest young miss. Lord Feng should prepare and have the eldest young miss come out. After Zhang Yuan finished speaking, he saluted the people of the Feng family. Feng Jin Yuan and the people of the Feng family also returned this salute. Only then did Zhang Yuan leave the manor. 
Before he had a chance to go call Chen Yu, a guard from outside the gate quickly ran in and said in a panic, Master, a carriage from the palace is coming towards our manor. Feng Jinyuan quickly gave an order to a servant, quickly go and help bring the eldest young miss out. He did not know what Zhang Yuan meant by the empress was going to give something to the eldest young miss. Chen Yu had done something bad last night. The empress not getting angry was already a massive imperial grace. How could she still send a gift to her? The matriarch was a little confused. Grabbing Yao Shi's sleeve with one hand and An Shi's sleeve with the other, she asked the two, what does the empress want to give Chen Yu? Yao Shi and An Shi shook their heads, quietly saying, this concubine does not know. Each one was formulaic and emotionless. The matriarch was angry and helpless. She wanted to vent on these two concubines, but one was Feng Yu Hen's mother and the other was mother to Xiang Rong, who got along well with Feng Yu Heng. She could do nothing to either of them. With no place to vent her anger, the matriarch looked around before finally calling a maid servant, go tell Han Shi to kneel in her own courtyard to receive the imperial decree with everyone else. The maid servant hurriedly ran off. Feng Yu Hen smiled to herself and quietly walked over to the matriarch, Grandmother, do not get angry. It might be that the Empress felt she had been too harsh last night and wishes to make things right by giving a gift. After all, Father is the Prime Minister. Only then did the matriarch relax a little, but she still felt uneasy. Fortunately, she had Feng Yu Hen could speak with. She quickly grabbed Feng Yu Hen's hand and oddly asked, Could it be? If the palace really valued your father's position as the prime minister, why did they not show the slightest bit of concern over the results of what happened with Chen Shi? Thinking a little more, she comforted herself, saying, previously, it was imperial concubine Yan. This time it is the empress. The empress has always been more lenient a person, unlike imperial concubine Yan. After saying this, she felt something was off. Grabbing Feng Yu Heng. She repeatedly said, I do not have any other meaning. I am not saying Imperial Concubine Yun is not good. Dear Granddaughter, you absolutely must not take it to heart. You must not get angry at Grandmother. Feng Yu Heng understood her grandmother was already beginning to fear her. It was not just the grandmother that feared her, Feng Jin Yuan also began to fear her, but he could handle it better than the matriarch. He also did not forget his pride as a father. She did not care about these sorts of things. Whether the Feng family loved or feared her, it was all a result of what they had done. Feng Yu Hen had never had any shetty principle like if a people do not trouble me, I will not trouble others. In regards to this Feng manner, whether she troubled people depended on her mood. If she was happy, she would go out and chat. If she was unhappy, she would definitely have to go out and find something to resolve her feelings. It could be considered as her having understood that in this family, aside from a few people that she held dear, the others were not worth pity. While she was thinking, Chen Yu had been helped out of her room by some servants. She had changed out of her red clothes long ago, and she had washed her face. All that remained to remind everyone of her troubles were her swollen eyes. The matriarch wanted to talk with Chen Yu. She was the daughter with the most help on her shoulders after all. She had doted on her for this many years. Now that she saw Chen Yu in such a miserable state, how could she not feel bad for her? But she was still holding on to Feng Yu Heng. If she let go of her now to go worry about Chen Yu, she felt it would not be too good. Just as the matriarch was hesitating, the palace carriage arrived at the manor's gates. Two palace maids exited the carriage first. They then lifted the curtain and helped an old granny out. Yao Shi glanced over and recognized that person. She quietly whispered to An Shi, that is the Dong granny who serves at the Empress side. She has served the Empress for thirty years. An Shi came to an understanding, Big Sister must have met plenty of people like this in the palace before, but now, it's fine. Yao Shi slightly shook her head, so long as my A Heng and Zeru are well. Anything is fine for me. And she nodded, second young miss and second young master are both people with bright futures. Big sister's future will definitely be blessed. While the two spoke, the granny entered the manor with the two palace servants behind her. 
in the hands of the two palace maids, there were two boxes. The granny's face had a serious expression, as she stood in the middle of the yard. Looking around at everyone, her gaze finally landed on Feng Yu Heng, and her gloomy face finally warmed up a little. With a bit of a smile, she nodded to Feng Yu Heng then returned being expressionless, loudly announcing, the Empress is giving an award. Feng family's eldest young miss, Feng Chen Yu, to receive the award. Although they had prepared themselves mentally, actually hearing that Chen Yu would receive an award, Feng Jin Yu An, the matriarch and Feng Chen Yu truly perked up. Everyone else had come to see something interesting, so they knelt down and heard the granny say, the empress has said that giving an award is enough. There is no need for an empress decree. As she said this, she waved to the two palace servants behind her, bring it forward. She then looked at Chen Yu and said, this is two boxes of blush from Zijiang that were offered as tribute to the palace. It is very precious. Every year, the palace only receives 365 boxes. PFT. Xiang Rong was the first to lost her composure and begin laughing. And she was frightened and covered her mouth. The granny did not say anything, instead glaring fiercely at Feng Jinyuan. Xiang Rong's face became red from holding it in. She wanted to laugh, but she did not dare laugh. 365 boxes each year, then would that not mean that the palace received one every day? How could that be considered precious? The granny was very satisfied with Xiang Rong's reaction. Clearing her throat, she continued, speaking of precious, the most precious part of this blush is its color. It is a type of black blush. After applying it, the entire face will turn black. Feng Chen Yu wanted to die. The thing she took pride in the most was her face. It could be said that this face was her life. At the time, it was based on this face that Taoist Ziyang claimed her to be the aspect of the phoenix, which led to her wanting to become the mother of all under heaven. But now, the empress wanted her to make her face black when she went out of the manor. How could this be fine? An unyielding look appeared on Feng Chen Yu's face, as she looked at Feng Jin Yuan in grief. She discovered, however, that Feng Jin Yuan merely had his head lowered and did not even look at her. When she looked over at the matriarch, she found that the matriarch was like her father and only kept her head down. Neither dared resist in the slightest. She had no choice. As she was about to speak up for herself, she raised her head and found that the granny was looking in her direction. At the same time, her voice carried some doubt, as she asked, Eldest young Miss Feng is wanting to refuse. Feng Chen Yu shivered, as her knees began to hurt. Having knelt for an entire night, they began to act up. She helplessly lowered her head, resist. She did not dare. This humble girl receives the award. She raised her hands high above her head, just as Feng Yuhen had to Jiang Yuan. Unfortunately, one had received a treasured bow, while the other received a crappy box of blush that the country saw more than 300 of each year. The two palace maids suddenly placed the two big boxes in Chen Yu's hands. Although it looked like two large boxes, the reality was that there were fifty smaller boxes inside. In addition to this, the boxes were originally quite heavy. Like that, the two boxes were dropped in Chen Yu's hands, causing her to feel a heavy sensation in her arms. This nearly caused her to drop the boxes. The granny quickly reminded her, eldest young miss. You must take care to hold on to the boxes. If the boxes were to flip, Her Highness would definitely get angry. Chen Yu could only do her best and hold the two boxes steadily. The tears in her eyes came out, causing her to look as pitiful as it was possible to be. The granny saw that the things were received then nodded in satisfaction. She then said, since eldest young Miss Feng has already received the award, this old servant will return and report to the Empress. Oh right as she said this, she turned towards Feng Yu Heng, her highness has been worrying about princess. Right before this old servant left the palace, her highness advised this old servant to urge princess to visit his majesty and her highness in the palace when princess has time. Feng Yu Heng smiled and raised her head, revealing two rows of white teeth and obediently saying, A Heng has remembered it. Many thanks to her highness for her concern. 
The Feng family's matriarch spoke her habitual words, we invite granny to come into the hall to drink some hot tea. The granny did not even look at the matriarch, only waving her hand. Turning around, she left the manor. Just as the palace's carriage left, Chen Yu's personal servant shrilly shrieked, Eldest young miss! What happened? Chapter 136, A Presumptuous Request Feng Chen Yu could no longer endure and dropped to the ground. This terrified the matriarch and Feng Jin Yu An, as the two quickly rushed over. With one person on each side holding Chen Yu's hands, they called out in unison, Chen Yu! Chen Yu! Unfortunately, no matter how they shouted, Chen Yu's eyes remained tightly shut. She had completely fainted. Feng Jin Yu An angrily shouted, Who went to call a doctor? How has one still not come? A servant immediately ran over and helplessly said, Master, the doctor came a long time ago, but with the imperial decrees coming one after another, the doctor was too scared to enter the manor and has been standing outside the entire time. Feng Jin Yu An was furious. Then go and quickly bring the doctor over. Oh! The servant complied and quickly ran out. Not long after, an old doctor carrying a medical kit was brought forward. Feng Yuhen felt that there was no need for her to remain, thus she walked over to Yao Xi and grabbed her hand, saying to the matriarch, Eldest sister's illness requires rest. A hen will not stay and cause trouble. She bowed and left with Yao Xi. Seeing this situation, and she also quickly said, then this concubine will also bring the third young miss back. The matriarch did not want to deal with them and waved her hand, you can all leave. And she quickly pulled Xiang Rong and left. Xiang Rong walked quickly and caught up with Feng Yuheng, asking, second sister, you did not come back all night. Nothing happened, right? Feng Yuheng could see a great deal of concern on Xiang Rong's face, which made her feel warm inside. Although she did not like this family, there were still some people that she felt close to. She raised her hand and patted Xiang Rong's cheeks, this little girl has become chubby recently. Finally showing a smile that a twelve-year-old girl should have, Xiang Rong, do not worry. Second sister is fine. Only then did Xiang Rong let out a sigh of relief, last night, after leaving the palace, I said I wanted to wait at the gates for second sister. But father would not agree no matter what I said. After returning to the manor, father immediately sent a carriage to the palace's gates to wait for eldest sister. Concubine mother and wanted to send a carriage to pick up second sister, but she was found out by father. He then locked us in the manor and said that nobody can go out. While Xiang Rong spoke, her face became cold. After hesitating a little, she quietly said, Second sister, Xiang Rong hates father and she was startled and quickly looked around then warned, speak quieter. Did you not take a look around and see where we are? Do not speak so loosely. Feng Yuhen gave and she a comforting and grateful smile, concubine mother, do not worry. A hen does not have much ability, but protecting Xiang Rong can still be done. And she frowned and grabbed Feng Yuhen's hand with concern, I am not worried about Xiang Rong. I am worried about you. Second young miss has great wisdom. That is something this concubine knows. However, no matter what, you are still a girl who has yet to get married. There are still over two years remaining and the situation in this manner is unstable. Who knows what can suddenly happen? Second young miss must be more careful. Yao she also nodded, your concubine mother and is right. Hey Heng, your father has not been the prime minister for this many years for nothing. Next time. Do not refute him directly. Feng Yuhen knew that these two were speaking entirely for her benefit, but she did not say anything. She only gave them a comforting smile, as she brought Yao Shi back to Tong Sheng Pavilion. The servants of Tong Sheng Pavilion had heard that Feng Yuhen had returned to the manor. Kanji and some side dishes were already prepared. Just as she returned to her room, King Yu brought the food in. Yao Shi told her to get some sleep after eating and not do anything else. Seeing that Feng Yuhen nodded, she then urged King Yu keep watch over her before bringing her own servant back to her courtyard. King Yu first poured her a cup of water then said, Young miss has not slept for a night, 
so do not eat too much greasy food. The kanji and vegetables will be easy on the stomach. Feng Yuhen looked at King Yu and could not help but smile, being so busy outside all the time, you have become thinner. The monthly salary I give you isn't too little, right? How come you aren't eating better? King Yu was a little embarrassed, as she smiled. While filling the bowl, she said, young miss is making fun of this servant. This servant has clearly gained weight. The clothes made when I just entered this manor can no longer be worn. Feng Yu Heng looked at her current clothes and suddenly remembered, ever since Granny Sun left the manor and Wang Kun went to Xiaozu with Zeru, there has nobody to manage Tong Sheng Pavilion. It is now past mid-autumn, but I do not seem to have prepared you any new clothes. King Yu helped fill her bowl with kanji and watched her drink a mouthful before saying, These things do not need young Miz to worry. This servant has already gone ahead and prepared new clothes for the servants of Tong Sheng Pavilion. I have also prepared an accounts room for Tong Sheng Pavilion. The accounts book will be taken care of by this servant. I want to observe the new servants that are being trained. When the time is right, they will be brought to the manor for young miss to take a look. If young miss finds them adequate, they can stay to help. Our Tong Sheng Pavilion is a little lacking in servants. Feng Yuhen was more and more satisfied with King Yu. This servant not only had a good mind for business, she was also very meticulous. She, after all, was not someone born and raised in Die Shun, so there were many rules from this era that she did not understand. King Yu, however, was very clear on these things. The many things that Feng Yuhen could not think of, King Yu could take the initiative in thinking for her. She would even actively go and do them, which really allowed her to relax. The matters of this courtyard will be left for you to take care of. Feng Yuhen was very trusting of King Yu, presently, Wang Kun is out and Huang Quan cannot be relied upon for this work based on her personality. You will be troubled a little more. If more servants are required, then go find some more. But when you do go look for servants, make sure to be careful and get the servant contracts. Also, make sure to clarify the things acquired from the government. King Yu nodded seriously, young miss, do not worry. This servant understands these matters. Feng Yuhen pondered a while then said, take care to bring in another two first rank servants and four second rank servants. The first rank ones can be brought in from the ones you are raising, and the second rate ones can be promoted or bought. She had already given King Yu the power. She allowed King Yu to raise a group of servants. On one hand, she taught them knowledge necessary to help out in shops, and on the other, she familiarized them with the Feng Manor. She lived here, so there could not be a shortage of helpers. Moreover, Feng Yu Heng's considerations did not end at the Feng Manor. There would come a day where she would do great things. The people she developed today would eventually become capable assistants. This servant has remembered. King Yu complied, these coming days, this servant will go out and choose. The ones that have been chosen will be brought to young miss. Young miss, please take a look. After Feng Yu Hen finished eating, King Yu carried the bowl out on a platter. Huang Quan just happened to run into her while entering the room. She joked with King Yu a little then entered the room, handing a letter to Feng Yu Heng. Wang Quan's carrier pigeon sent this. The pigeon used came from the palace. They only know the way back to the palace. Bei Aizi just gave sent this over. Young miss, please take a look. Feng Yuhen received the letter and opened it. She saw Wang Kun's handwriting, everything is well in Xiaozu. The things young miss instructed have been completed. Young master Zeru is thought very highly of by head teacher Yi. This servant will return to the capital in a few days. Young miss do not worry. Only then did she relax. Handing the letter to Huang Quain, Huang Quain also took a look and said, the matters in Xiaozi being successful is good, but what will young miss do with those girls? Feng Yuhen smiled. Huang Quain's mind was not as sharp as Wang Quan's. Having her train in martial arts was fine, but she was a little lacking mentally comparatively. Raising some well-taught children will eventually help spread a hundred herb hall all over Die Shun. Huang Quan whispered, young miss, you want to do business? 
She laughed, just consider it business. Diagnosing illness and fetching medicine require money, however, Huang Guain, you must know that in the future, our hundred herb hall will be in every province of Dia Shun. If you want to know something, want to control something, would this not be like having countless more eyes? Huang Quain came to a sudden realization, young miss is really thorough. Huang Quain has received a lesson. Feng Yu Heng nodded and said to Huang Quain, relax and wait for Wang Quan to return. Our days will not lack in brilliance. If you follow me, I will not allow you to be disappointed. Huang Quain trusted Feng Yu Heng's words, of course. Having come to the Feng Manor for so long, when had this second young miss ever allowed for them to be disappointed? Especially, the triple arrow shot Feng Yu Hen performed at the banquet. It truly made a lasting impression on everyone. Huang Quain knew that if the Feng family's second young miss had already married Prince Yu, perhaps the Feng manor's docile would have been flattened by people seeking relations. Feng Yu Hen began to sleep after eating. With this, she slept through the entire day. She was completely unaware of the troubled hearts of the Feng family that did not know why Chen Yu suddenly fainted. She was devoted solely to sleeping. In the middle of the night, Huang Quain went to her bed and woke her up, saying, Young miss, the matriarch came. Feng Yu Hen was in a daze and did not hear clearly, who came. Huang Quain said it again, The matriarch. The Feng family's matriarch came to Tongsheng Pavilion. She said she absolutely must see young miss. What time is it right now? She rubbed her eyes and reluctantly got out of bed. It just passed three in the morning. Huang Quain was also very unhappy. While taking care of dressing Feng Yu Heng, she complained, what sort of manners does the Feng family matriarch have to come in the middle of the night? Feng Yu Heng grinned, who cares? Either way, it is not a good manners. But if it is too much, we can surround her in airtight walls. After she finished cleaning up, Huang Quain accompanied her to the hall. When they arrived, the servant keeping guard just happened to be helping the matriarch in. Feng Yu Heng expressed her satisfaction. The rules she said were carried out quite well. Even if it was the Feng family's matriarch, she could not stroll into Tong Sheng Pavilion from a Liu courtyard as she pleased. Grandmother. Regardless of the situation, the act she put on before the matriarch had to be done. Feng Yu Hen quickly went forward and took over helping the matriarch from Granny Zhao. Glancing sideways at Granny Zhao, she saw an exhausted face and could not help but smile to herself. They were all older people. How could they endure this trouble? It is so late, has something happened to grandmother? Why not send someone to come call Lei Heng, Tong Sheng Pavilion is too far. What would we do if something were to happen while grandmother went through such trouble? The matriarch could not be bothered with the small talk. She simply went straight to the heart of the matter, Chen Yu's illness is not getting better. Many doctors have been called, but they all shake their heads. The medicine that she should take have been given to her, but she is still unconscious. Hey Heng, grandmother is also out of options. In any case, we are all one family. Could you go over and take a look at her? The matriarch spoke with a begging tone. A troubled expression appeared on Feng Yu Heng's face, as she looked at the matriarch and said, Grandmother, you also know that father is prejudiced against A Heng. Treating illness always has a bit of what if. What if A Heng makes a mistake or something goes wrong, father will definitely blame me. Perhaps A Heng will be sent to the mountains in the northwest once more. He dares. The matriarch became angry, A Heng, do not worry. With your grandmother supporting you, your father will not dare do anything to you. So long as you go take a look at your eldest sister, even if something goes wrong, grandmother will definitely stand on your side. Feng Yu Hen displayed her gratitude, grandmother is truly too good to A Heng. The matriarch grabbed her hand and spoke with a trembling voice, Dear granddaughter, have you promised grandmother? Feng Yu Hen nodded, Un with grandmother supporting A. a. Heng, A. Heng will definitely do a good job in treating eldest sister. After saying this, a glimmer flashed through her eyes that only Huang Quain could see, Chapter 137, I Will Stab You to Death. When Feng Yu Heng accompanied the matriarch to see Chen Yu, Feng Jin Yu An was also present. 
Also accompanying Feng Jinyuan at Chen Yu's side was Jin Zhen. Seeing them arrive, Jin Zhen quickly stood up and saluted. The matriarch did not have the heart to pay any attention to Jin Zhen, only asking, How has Chen Yu been? Feng Jinyuan helplessly shook his head, She still has not woken up. He then looked at Feng Yu Hen, then coldly said, What have you come to do? She revealed a scared look and hid behind the matriarch, saying in a frightened voice, Grandmother. However, there was not even the slightest trace of fear in her eyes. Feng Jinyuan wanted to slap her. He thought to himself, can you not pretend to be like a child? But, in the end, he did not dare. The matriarch hit the ground with her cane and angrily said, I brought a Heng to come take a look at Chen Yu. Do you have any objections? Once the matriarch spoke, how could Feng Jinyuan dare have any objections? Furthermore, Chen Yu's illness could not be treated even after having called for many doctors. If Feng Yu Hen could take a look, perhaps there was a way. He lowered his eyes and retreated half a step, giving way to Feng Yu Heng. Feng Yu Hen glanced sideways at her father then walked over to Chen Yu. Feng Jin Yuan was still a little worried and urged again, you must take care when treating her. She rolled her eyes, with doctors coming from all over and not being able to treat her properly, is this not giving medicine to a dead horse? After speaking, she did not wait for her father to speak again. She placed one hand on Feng Chen Yu's wrist and the other gestured for Feng Jin Yuan to remain quiet. Feng Jin Yuan immediately shut his mouth. Glaring daggers at Feng Yu Heng, it was as though he worried that she would harm Chen Yu. She felt this situation was incredibly interesting. Pinch a little more pinch a little harder. How about using nails? Thus, Feng Yu Hen meddled about for a while and arrived at an understanding. What did they mean when they said that they called many doctors and they could not treat her properly? The saying goes you can never wake a person that is pretending to sleep. Chen Yu was pretending to be ill. She did not want to wake up, so there was naturally no effect when giving her medicine. She had come to an understanding. Putting on a grave expression, she gently put down Chen Yu's hand and tucked it under the blanket. Only then did she turn around and shake her head to the matriarch, eldest sister's illness it truly is worrying. The matriarch and Feng Jin Yuan both took a step forward. Feng Jin Yuan was the first to ask, what sort of illness is it? Feng Yu Hen sighed, a fire is attacking her heart. There is a resentment in her chest that she cannot resolve. This has damaged her central nervous system, which is causing eldest sister to be unable to wake up. The matriarch did not understand, but thankfully, Feng Yu Heng explained more clearly than other doctors. She had named the illness. It must be said that the previous doctors could not even give an explanation. Some even simply waved their hands and left without a single word. Fortunately I went and called a hangover. Otherwise, Chen Yu would have been in danger. The matriarch was very proud of her decision to call Feng Yu Heng. Feng Jin Yuan could not be bothered with Aru Jing too much. He directly asked Feng Yu Heng, then how is it treated? Feng Yu Heng put on a troubled look. Feng Jin Yuan became anxious, if you have something to say, then say it. So long as Chen Yu can be woken up, any conditions you raise, father will agree to. Oh? She raised an eyebrow, father should make sure not to be overzealous. What if a hen says I want my mother to become the Feng family's head wife again, what then? Feng Jin Yuan was stunned. He had never expected that he had said something so direct. Normally, were these polite words not meant to be followed by daughter being able to do something for the family as an honor? And they would never dare to ask their father for a reward. Really there was no way to communicate with this daughter. Seeing Feng Jin Yuan's many different expressions, Feng Yu Hen smiled, Father, do not worry. A Hen definitely will not have that sort of request. To speak nothing of troubling father, even my mother would not be pleased. Fuh. Since when has there been a time for her to say if she was happy or not? Feng Jin Yuan's anger surged forth once more, for a simple concubine, being promoted to the head wife is her good fortune. Then saying it like that, Father is agreeing. Feng Yu Heng blinked and looked at him, but she saw her father turn his head away. Jin Yuan. The matriarch became angry, you are a father. 
Are you incapable of speaking properly with your daughter? Both your palm and the back of your hand are made of flesh. Your love for Chen Yu is not fake, but you cannot mistreat a Heng so much. She took a couple steps forward and grabbed Feng Yu Heng's hand. A Heng, grandmother will open the storage tomorrow. You can pick and choose what good items or fabrics you want. Also, some more autumn clothes and winter clothes will be prepared. When the weather cools down and new materials come in, you can choose first. Is this good? Feng Jinyuan was very satisfied with this sort of arrangement and also nodded. Feng Yuhen smiled. The position of head wife, this was simply Feng Yuhen probing Feng Jinyuan's attitude on the matter. She understood Yaoshi's thoughts on the matter. After these years, she had already stopped thinking of being together with Feng Jinyuan. She smiled and nodded, everything will be as grandmother arranges. This gave the matriarch plenty of face. The matriarch was very happy and felt that she was the only one in the family who could handle this second granddaughter. Feng Yuhen did not give anyone else face, but she would definitely give face to her. This instantly caused her to become even more conceited. Feng Jinyuan hurried her, since there is an agreement, quickly tell us how to treat your eldest sister's illness. Feng Yuhen nodded, her face becoming grim. This caused the matriarch and Feng Jinyuan to also become nervous. Eldest sister's illness is very rare. Whether the treatment is successful or not depends on if she can wake up. Previously, the reason the valuable medical herbs did not work is because she did not wake up. Then how can we make her wake up? Acupuncture. Feng Yuhen said firmly, using silver needles on the patient, they will be used to stimulate certain points by twisting and poking at them. From there, we can treat this illness. The matriarch felt that what she had said was very professional. While listening, she nodded. Feng Jinyuan followed up with a question, where will the needles be used? You just said that she had resentment in her chest area. Could it be that you will be using the needles in that area? He was a little worried, would that not be too risky? Feng Yuhen shook her head, I naturally will not be using such a risky method. As the saying goes, the index finger is connected to the heart. My needle will be used on her finger. If I can connect the heart and the lungs, then eldest sister will wake up. Hearing her say this, Feng Jinyuan relaxed, then quickly get to work. Feng Yuhen turned around and nodded to Huang Quain. Huang Quain took two steps forward and placed the medical kit that she had been holding next to Feng Yuhen. From inside, she took out a set of silver needles used for acupuncture and ordered Huang Quain, prepare high degree alcohol and bring the candle over here. In reality, she very rarely used this method of disinfection. She had plenty of medical use alcohol in her space, but she did not want to show it to these people. The matriarch saw that she was acting cautiously, so she could not help but feel a little more satisfied. She repeatedly praised, if we are speaking of the children in the manner, it really is a Heng that is the most outstanding and the best at fighting for the family. Feng Yuhen graciously replied, many thanks grandmother for the praise. However, Feng Jinyuan simply snorted. The matriarch quickly glared at Feng Jinyuan. She did not understand, why was her son so disdainful of a Heng? Could he no longer even keep up an act? What she did not know, however, was that Feng Jinyuan originally felt remorse towards her, but he did not want to openly face her. Now, however, he was almost afraid of her. So long as he could avoid interacting with Feng Yuheng, he would ignore her for the rest of his life. Very quickly, Huang Quain and the servants from the courtyard finished the preparations. Feng Yuheng held the needle and disinfected it. Finally, when she grabbed Chen Yu's hand, she felt the once cold hand began to sweat. Observing a little more closely, she found that Chen Yu's brows were slightly furrowed. There was also no shortage of quivering. She laughed to herself. You want to feign illness? I will poke you to death, let's see if you're still unwilling to get up. The silver needle that had been disinfected in the high degree alcohol had a unique odor. When smelled, it would make people think of illness. It was like when modern people smelled disinfectant, they would think of getting a shot at a hospital. It was like a conditioned reflex. 
She tightly clasped Chen Yu's hand to prevent the other side from escaping after she began the acupuncture. She had made up her mind that she would get full enjoyment out of poking her. She definitely would not stop. This acupuncture will require 49 needles spread out between the fingers and the palm. Grandmother and father must pay attention. Once eldest sister appears to be awake, you must hold her steady on the bed. The 49 needles must be completed for the treatment to take effect, otherwise, I fear that the effect will only be temporary. Even if eldest sister wakes up for the moment, she will also mysteriously faint and not wake up again. Feng Jinyuan solemnly nodded. The matriarch even ordered a servant, go climb to the other side of the bed. In a while, help hold down the eldest young miss. She and Feng Jinyuan then spread out, prepared to cooperate with Feng Yuhen's acupuncture. Feng Yuhen saw that everything was ready. The corners of her lips formed a sneaky smile. Holding the needle between two fingers, she stabbed down at Chen Yu's right index finger with almost no warning. They heard the originally fainted Chen Yu loudly scream out and struggle to get up to free her hand. Feng Yu Heng anxiously concentrated on the people at her side. Quickly hold her down. The acupuncture must not be done haphazardly, and it must definitely not stop. Otherwise, all the previous efforts would be in vain. The matriarch, Feng Jinyuan and the servant all took action, pressing the half-sitting Chen Yu back down to the bed. Feng Jinyuan pressed down while saying, Chen Yu, you must not move. You absolutely must not move. A hen is saving your life, so endure it a little. The matriarch also added, thankfully, your second sister being a divine doctor. You have been fainted for an entire afternoon. If it were not for A Heng, grandmother grandmother really fears that you would not have woken up. As the two spoke, Feng Yu Hen's second needle stabbed down. This time, she used even more force. It seemed as though the entire needle went through her flesh. Chen Yu cried out loudly in pain. Her screams were like a pig being slaughtered. Her entire body bounced around wildly on the bed, causing the matriarch to sweat from exhaustion. Feng Yuhen did not stop moving. Her wrists fluttered, as one needle followed another. Every time a needle came down, she would stab Chen Yu's hand twice. Gradually, Chen Yu's cries weakened. She no longer had the strength to struggle. Feng Jinyuan looked at this and was afraid. He could not help but begin to blame Feng Yu Heng, could it be that you have overdone it? Why does it look like Chen Yu is about to faint again? Feng Yu Heng sneered internally, but she said, Father, do not get angry. If the set of 49 needles does not help eldest sister, A Heng can try a set of 81 needles on eldest sister's other hand. Hearing these words, Chen Yu's entire body trembled, as she loudly shouted, No need. I am fine. I am really fine, chapter 138, perhaps it's a disaster. Finally, the 49 needles were completed. Chen Yu's bed was soaked with her sweat. The matriarch and Feng Jinyuan along with the servant were dead tired. Feng Yu Heng cleaned her hands while she had Huang Quan put away the silver needles. At the same time, she faintly said, this is truly a strange illness. If A Heng were any slower to begin the acupuncture, Perhaps eldest sister would never have woken up again in this lifetime. The matriarch felt a wave of fear wash over her and could not help but glare at Feng Jinyuan. Thankfully, I went to call Feng Yu Heng over. If we kept waiting for the doctor you called, then you would not even have a chance to feel regret over Chen Yu. Feng Jinyuan felt this situation was very odd, especially the way Chen Yu's eyes were filled with resentment when she woke up. She was like a poisonous scorpion that wanted to kill Feng Yu Heng. How could that be the appearance of someone who had just woken up? He seemed to have realized something. Looking at Chen Yu's hand that was riddled with holes, his entire body froze. Could it be that Chen Yu had feigned her illness, but he and the matriarch had brought Feng Yu Heng here, which caused her to suffer? Feng Yu Heng saw that Feng Jin Yuan was beginning to understand. Knowing that he had thought of something, she could not help but raise the corners of her lips. This Feng family, it truly was becoming more and more interesting. Feng Yu Heng. Feng Jin Yuan gritted his teeth and looked at this daughter, hating that he could not personally beat her to death, 
you have such a cruel heart. These words were said very quietly, as they were squeezed out from between the gaps in his teeth. Feng Yuheng looked at him with innocent eyes and suddenly let out a beautiful but malicious laugh. She said, what of it? That's right. What of it? Even if Feng Jinyuan guessed that Chen Yu was feigning illness, could he expose it? Would Chen Yu dare admit it? Aside from the father and daughter that realized it, neither could do anything about it. Chen Yu had been poked 49 times, yet she still had to appear deeply grateful. This made the two want to spit fire. All right. The matriarch wiped away some sweat with the help of Granny Zhao then said, since Chen Yu has woken up, I can relax. She gave some orders to the servants in the room, help the eldest young miss change her clothes. Change her sheets as well. They have all been soaked in sweat. Save the bath for later to avoid catching a cold. The servants nodded and set to work. The matriarch looked again towards Feng Yu Heng, her eyes full of gratitude, A Heng has truly been troubled. You already did not get any sleep yesterday, and you were woken up in the middle of the night today. Grandmother is truly sorry. Feng Yu Heng comforted her, Grandmother, do not say such things. To say nothing of eldest sister's illness, even if it were someone else, so long as grandmother asked, A Heng will definitely take action. The matriarch that she had a lot of face and repeatedly praised Dae Heng for being good. She then held Feng Yu Heng's hand and left the courtyard. When only Feng Jin Yuan and Chen Yu were left, Feng Jin Yuan really wanted to ask if Chen Yu's illness was faked. But when he saw the resentment on Chen Yu's face, he felt that there was no need to ask. The answer was obvious, but he did not know why Chen Yu would feign such an illness. After returning to Tongsheng Pavilion, Huang Quan finally exploded in laughter after holding it in. Holding on to an old tree, she shook as she laughed. Feng Yuhen waited patiently for her to finish laughing then said, was it really that funny? Huang Quan vigorously nodded, too funny. Young miss, this trick of yours really was fiendish. If the prince knew, he would also praise you like this. Feng Yuhen held her forehead, fiendish. This was considered praise? Your Prince Yu's palace really is original with its praise. The next day, Feng Yu Hen slept until noon. When she woke up, Yao Shi was sitting at her bedside and sewing some clothes. She sat up and rubbed her eyes, what is mother doing here? What are you sewing? Yao Shi smiled, I am making some inner clothes for you and Zirui. I am just a few stitches away from finishing. Didn't the manor already provide clothes? Why is mother wasting time on this? She reached out and touched the white cloth. It was incredibly soft and indeed of higher quality than what the manor provided. This is something your concubine mother and specially went out and had people look for. There is not much of the fabric. There is only enough to make one piece for each of you three children. Yao Shi put down her work and patted Feng Yu Heng's hair, previously, when we were in the mountains, you could not eat well. Your hair was always yellow and sparse. Now, not only is your hair growing well, you have become quite a beauty. Feng Yuhen could tell that there was another meaning within Yao Shi's words. Looking at her for a while, she resolutely said, Mother, if you have something to say, say it directly. There is no need for this. Yao Shi sighed and held her hand, Hey Heng, there are some things that Mother does not want to ask, but holding it in is too painful. In the future, if anyone else asks, I do not know how to respond. Mother is wanting to ask when I learned to use a bow, right? She knew that although Yao Shi did not personally see the skills she revealed the night of the banquet, there was no possibility that the people of the manor would not speak of it. Yao Shi had always been one with a heavy heart. Having doubts was normal. She brought out a commonly used excuse, it was a Persian eccentric that taught me. Is there really a Persian eccentric? Yao Shi simply followed up with this question. Feng Yu Hen smiled, Mother, if you believe it, then there is one. If you do not believe it, then there isn't one. I am your daughter, so I will not harm you. Yao Shi saw that she did not want to say anything further. Being able to give an excuse like this was just so she could give an explanation if anyone asked in the future. She was helpless but she did not pursue this matter any further, only saying, 
I am your mother, and I am only worried about your well-being. Sending off Yao Xie, Feng Yuhen could not help but think more about it. Yao Xie was already beginning to have questions. She could use Persian eccentric to fool other people, but it could not deceive the mother she had lived with in the mountain village. Today, she only asked. If she had more questions in the future that were hard to answer, she feared that this would become a bigger and bigger knot. It seemed that she had to find a way to distance herself from Yao Xi. Sent her to Xiaozi to accompany Zeru. Feng Yuheng thought about it for a while, but she also understood that this did not need to be rushed. Presently, there were too many unknown factors. Firstly, she had to ensure Yao Xi's safety. Escaping from under her eyes, this matter needed further consideration. That afternoon, King Yu brought back some news, the Bu family is conducting a funeral. Right now, the entire capital is discussing the funeral of Lord Bu. Only then did she remember the Lord Bu who had been smashed to death by his own daughter. That might be the most depressing way to die in the world, right? The funeral must be quite large, right? She ate desserts while speaking with King Yu. King Yu poured her a cup of tea and nodded, replying, regardless of circumstance, he was still a second rank official. Moreover, there is still head imperial concubine Bu's face to consider. How could it not be well attended? Yesterday evening, wonderful treasure house sold a cicada mouthpiece. This servant sent someone to ask around after that and found that it was the Bu family that bought it. The so-called cicada mouthpiece was really just an ancient funeral item. It was placed in the deceased Perseon's mouth to hold down the tongue. The cicada mouthpiece was made of jade in the shape of a cicada. The jade means for the spirit to never die, while the cicada symbolized rebirth. Normally, wealthy families were extremely particular about it. The Boo family buying a cicada mouthpiece for Lord Boo's funeral showed that they really attached importance to this. Has there been any movement from the Bu family? Recently, the one who had been walking around outside the most was King Yu. Feng Yuhen gradually became accustomed to inquiring about things from King Yu. If she had anything to do, she would go find Wang Quan and Huang Quan. The partner at Wonderful Treasure House heard the two people who came to buy the cicada mouthpiece chatting. It seems they said that they have already sent a letter to the great general at the border telling him to hurry home for the funeral of his father. Feng Yuhen was very interested in this piece of news. She was also very satisfied with the performance of that partner at Wonderful Treasure House. She told King Yu, give the partner that heard this news tootles as a reward. At the same time, make it clear to them that any news they heard, they must not tell anyone else. Aside from you and me, anyone else that wants to learn any information must do so with my waste plate. As she spoke, she pulled out the waste plate that the matriarch had especially made for her and Xiang Rong before the banquet and handed it to King Yu, look carefully at this. I will use this for now. In the future, when I have found something more appropriate, I will naturally switch. King Yu was a smart servant. She understood the meaning behind Feng Yu Hen's words. Young miss, you are wanting to train informants. Do not worry, this servant will definitely keep watch over the people of the three shops. At the same time, this servant will also pay close attention to people who are fit to be trained. Recently, you have been handling the matters on the outside, so I am reassured. Only, the people you have noticed need to not only pay attention to business. Just like the matter with the informants, they must also work seriously. They cannot be good looking but they also cannot be ugly. It would be best for them to be the type that can blend in with a very ordinary face. Like this, they will not leave any impression on others and can be used more. King Yu nodded, this servant has remembered it. Yesterday, young miss mentioned wanting to bring in more helpers, thus this servant also made some decisions. A group of people can be brought in for young miss to choose tomorrow. There is no need for me to choose you can directly bring the people into the manor. I trust you. She did not want to do everything herself. She had to leave some room for her subordinates to grow. Even if the people King Yu chose were not good, or even bad, it was also an experience to learn from. 
The reason she was developing people like King Yu was so they could support the heavens even if she were not there. King Yu was very grateful for Feng Yu Heng's trust, rather she was moved. She originally did not dare act as a normal maidservant that took care of people. Feng Yu Hen putting her to work like this made it so she could practically make use of all her abilities. By allowing her to handle things on her own, it brought back her past self-confidence. King Yu believed that there would not be another master like Feng Yu Hen in this lifetime. The master and servant chatted for a little while longer before King Yu left the manor with her work. Feng Yu Hen called for Huang Quan and ordered, find a way to investigate Bu Kong. The more information the better. Huang Quan nodded in compliance, but she also reminded her, that sort of thing needs to be inquired from his highness side. Or we could borrow people from his side to investigate. Feng Yu Hen faintly sighed, go, either way, we are lacking people at the moment. Watching Huang Quan quickly leave, Feng Yu Hen could not help but feel a little anxious. In this era without convenient communication or transportation, how important was it to create a reliable information network? Bukong, that was the man that she had supposedly had some disputes with, and he was returning to the capital. Why was it that when she heard this news, she felt a little panicked? That day, when she had heard the story relating to the body's original owner and Bukong's past, she had taken it as a beautiful story. She even listened to it with a bit of a desire for gossip. Now, however, intuition told her that Bu Kong returning to the capital could be a disaster for the Feng Manor, or rather for her, Feng Yu Heng, Chapter 139, Ghost in White. Early in the morning the next day, the females of the Feng Manor gathered in Xu Ya courtyard to pay respects to the matriarch. Chen Yu also had the two servants, Yi Lin and Yi Yui, sitting to the side. The tea was placed on the table, but she had a swollen hand and was scared to pick it up. Feng Yu Hen was seated comfortably on a soft cushion at the matriarch's feet. Reaching out her hand, she felt the matriarch's pulse. Whenever this happened, the matriarch felt that Feng Yu Hen was the most useful. Having a daughter that understood medicine was always better than bringing in a doctor. This way, she could avoid the thing that happened to Zirui. Grandmother's body has not been seriously affected. After feeling her pulse for a while, Feng Yu Hen put down her hand and comforted the matriarch, although it is now autumn, grandmother's waist and legs have been well protected and have not been hit by serious illness. Your pulse is also stable. After hearing this, the matriarch felt very uncomfortable and devoted her energy solely towards praising her, it really is our A Heng who is best. Feng Yu Heng, however, warned the matriarch, but you must pay attention to your gallbladder. Grandmother has been getting angry too often recently, which is not good for the gallbladder. The matriarch helplessly sighed. Getting angry too often? It would be strange if did not happen this often. Seated to the side, Han Shi rolled her eyes and said in an odd manner, things keep happening in the manner one after another. It would be odd to not get angry. As she spoke, she glanced at Chen Yu, eldest young miss. What do you say? Chen Yu had her head down, not wanting to pay any attention to her. Han Shi, however, did not let her off easy, continuing, especially the eldest young Miss Hand. That will cause mother-in-law to be even more angry. Ah, I must say, people should not be so quick to faint. If things do not go well, in the end, the one to suffer will be yourself. Ever since Han Shi began speaking, Everyone in the felt uncomfortable. Previously, Han Shi was extremely charming. Now, she had a somewhat mysterious way of speaking similar to Feng Yu Heng. Chen Yu felt her anger flare up from her words, but she could only do her best to keep it in. She only strongly disagreed with what Han Shi said, I truly fell ill. Concubine Mother Han, please do not spread false rumors. Oh? Han Shi raised her voice. When did I mention any rumors? When did I ever say eldest young miss faked her illness? Yu Chen Yu felt that the current Han she was just a shrew. She did not want to waste words with a shrew. Thus, she lowered her head once more and shut her mouth. Han she watched Chen Yu and sneered, with a hand in that condition, I do not know if it will ever recover. Eldest young miss has been proficient with the zither ever since a young age. 
Now that your hand has been wasted, will you still be able to play the zither? Chen Yu's heart dropped, as she suddenly raised her head and asked, What do you mean by this? She then looked at Feng Yu Heng, My hand won't heal? Feng Yu Heng rolled her eyes, If concubine mother Han is also a doctor, then eldest sister, just believe her. Enough. The matriarch could no longer endure listening to Han Shi's odd manner of speaking. If this Xiuya courtyard cannot accommodate you, then scram back to your own courtyard. To even forget your own standing and have forgotten to refer to yourself as this concubine? It seems that you have some other objective. No matter how bold Han she was, she did not dare act against the matriarch, as she awkwardly lowered her head and stopped talking. The matriarch looked at Chen Yu's hand and began to worry. She could not help but ask Feng Yu Heng. Your eldest sister's hand, grandmother, do not worry. She gave a comforting smile, after half a month to a month, eldest sister's hand will be fine. The matriarch let out a sigh, and Chen Yu also felt relieved upon hearing this. Oh, Chen Yu. The matriarch said, this time, you suddenly fell ill. This time, you really need to thank Ke Heng. If she were not here, perhaps you would still not have woken up even now. You must properly thank your second sister. Feng Chen Yu hatefully gritted her teeth. She even had the heart to want to kill Feng Yu Heng, so how could she thank her? Grandmother, please think a little more about the people of the family. Second sister is still only twelve years old after all. Always saying that she has learned from old divine Dr. Yao, but that only happened for a few years. As for the so-called Persian eccentric that she mentioned, it would be best not to believe outsiders. Do not be too reliant on it, so you do not trouble someone else. When she these things, it was because of Feng Yu Heng, so there was not a very good tone. The matriarch heard these complaints are you lecturing me? That day, you were fainted and did not wake. Your father and I stayed with you for an entire night and called for many doctors. None of them could wake you up. I had no other choice but to call your second sister. You indeed woke up thanks to her treatment. I can ignore you not being grateful, but how can you say such things? You truly do not know how to tell good from bad. You really do not know how to tell. Chen Yu was shocked and immediately realized that she had gone overboard. She indeed hated Feng Yu Heng, but her words were spoken to the matriarch. How could she get angry with the grandmother that even her father had to yield to? Realizing this point, Chen Yu quickly stood up then knelt before the matriarch, Grandmother, please forgive me. Chen Yu has only woken up a few days ago. My mind is still not very clear. The things I just said were nonsense. When she raised her head again, there were two tear streaks on her face. This appearance caused people to feel for her. How could the matriarch continue to hold it against her? Quickly get up. She sighed, I know you just recovered. I do not blame you. It's just that your second sister did it out of the goodness of her heart. You must know to thank her. Feng Chen Yu cursed the matriarch internally for a while, thinking this old woman had lived for too long. She has gone senile to have been so easily coaxed by a child that came out of the mountains. She even defended her to this degree. But the matriarch insisted, so she had no other choice. She could only grit her teeth and say to Feng Yu Heng, if that is the case, then thank you second sister. While she spoke, she did not even look at Feng Yu Heng. The matriarch felt that Chen Yu's attitude was not good and was prepared to say a few more things, but at this time, a servant came in from the outside. In her hand was an invitation. Granny Zhao quickly went up and received it. She then said a few words to the servant before turning around and saying to the matriarch, It is an invitation from the Bu Manor to attend the funeral. It is Lord Bu's funeral. Our manor should send someone to offer condolences. While she spoke, she handed the invitation to the matriarch. The matriarch received it. Looking at it, she said, It should be attended. At the time of Chen Shi's funeral, the Bu family's eldest son also came. Feng Yuhen heard this and flipped through her memories. The Bu family's eldest son was called Bu Bei Ai Qi. At that time, her maternal grandfather was treating Bu Bei Ai Qi's injuries when he received news of her birth. 
It must be said that the Boo family's eldest son is a straightforward and honest person. We the matriarch suddenly stopped in her tracks and could not continue. Her hand trembled, as she glanced at Feng Yuhen subconsciously before looking away again. Feng Yuhen found this to be funny, instead taking the initiative and asking, did the invitation mention a Heng? The matriarch nodded with a hint of embarrassment. Bringing the invitation back a little, that's right. A Heng was invited. Ha! Huh. She failed to hold in her laugh, the funeral invitation actually named me? Is the Boo family acting as though this is some celebration? Normally, only invitations to celebratory events would specially name their invitees. Invitations to funerals were usually sent to invite entire families. The matriarch also felt the Boo family was being excessive, but what she felt was excessive was not the matter of being specially named on the invitation to a funeral. What she found excessive was that the invitation actually clearly said, We invite the Feng family's daughter to a concubine Feng Yu Heng to the Bu Manor to cut and beg forgiveness for her sins. But she did not dare say this to Feng Yu Heng. Heavens knew how this second granddaughter would react. Moreover, how was Lord Bu's death related to their family's A Heng? The Bu family's people truly are too deceitful. The matriarch put down the invitation in her hand, A Heng. There is no need to worry about it. And she also nodded, Lord Bu's rank was merely at the second rank. Our family's master is a standard first rank. How could they possibly have the right to name our Feng family's second young miss to offer condolences? Yao Shi also spoke up with her words being more professional than in Shi's there is no such rule in the court. Everyone was fully in agreement with what the two said, repeatedly nodding along with them. Only Feng Chenya frowned and said, although Lord Bu is of a lower rank than father, there is still a hidden imperial concubine in the palace. Hearing these words, the matriarch began to reconsider. Indeed, a minister could not control a prime minister, but the head imperial concubine in the palace was different. Everyone knew that Lord Bu was smashed to death by head imperial concubine Bu, and imperial concubine Bu had been personally thrown by the emperor which was because she had offended imperial concubine Yun. But even if this was the case, there was no news of head imperial concubine being demoted. It seemed that there were no changes being made. With that being the case, this circumstance was a little more subtle. The matriarch subconsciously looked towards Feng Yuheng. What she saw was a relaxed face devoid of worry. Seeing her look over, Feng Yuheng spoke, saying, Grandmother, there is no need to worry. A Heng will take a trip over to Bu Manor. Regardless of what is said, A Heng was personally present. Not going to offer condolences will leave me feeling a little awkward. Hearing her say this, the matriarch immediately let out a sigh of relief. She really worried that this granddaughter would become stubborn and refuse to go. When the time came, she would not know what sort of trouble would be stirred. A Heng is really sensible. She said sincerely, it would be great if all of the children in the family could learn to be like this. Feng Yuhen had used this excuse, so Xiang Rong, who was sitting next to her, could not avoid going, thus she stood up and said, Xiang Rong also feels the same as second sister. The matriarch repeatedly nodded her head, then let's all go together. Grandmother will personally bring you to Bu Manor. Saying this, she looked towards Chen Yu, you will also go. Leaving Xiu Ya courtyard, Yao Shi pulled Feng Yu Hen and walked a little faster. Only when they pulled quite a distance between them and everyone else did she say, the other members of the Bu family, you should know a little bit about. But Lord Bu's only son, Bu Bei Ai Chi, has been close with your maternal grandfather for many years. Recently, he became a fifth rank official in the Board of Revenue, he, Feng Yuhen saw that Yao Shi was a little anxious, so she simply picked up where she left off. He has a son named Bu Kong. At the time, he had asked his father to come to the Feng Manor to ask for my hand in marriage. Yao Shi nodded, you still remember? She obviously did not remember. She had heard it all from other people, but she did not want to explain. Instead, she just nodded, mother's meaning, I understand. Do not worry. Ever since A Hen became engaged to the Ninth Prince, I will definitely not develop feelings for anyone else. Yao Shi let out a sigh of relief, either way, 
Be wary of what you say and do while over at the Boo family. I fear that this funeral is not so simple. Going to the Boo family to offer condolences was set for early in the morning of the next day. Feng Yu Heng woke up early and put on a set of plain clothing before going over to Shuya courtyard. Picking up the matriarch, she accompanied her on the walk to the manor's gates. Xiang Rong had also woken up early in the morning and was waiting at the gate. When the three met up, Xiang Rong revealed a frightened expression, as she looked in a certain direction. They followed her gaze and saw a white shadow in the distance. It was like a ghost, floating in their direction. Chapter 140, Let's See Who Has a Better Backing The matriarch retreated a couple steps in fear of that white shadow. Tightly holding on to Granny Zhao, she asked with a quivering voice, What is that thing? Xiang Rong was also frightened, as she trembled and grabbed Feng Yu Heng's hand. Feng Yu Heng squinted her eyes and looked at the thing that floated towards them. Patting the back of Xiang Rong's hand, she turned around and told the matriarch, Grandmother, do not be afraid. It's eldest sister. Hearing these words, the matriarch quickly rubbed her eyes and carefully looked. And there it was. In a pure white dress with her hair falling to her shoulders, she even wore a white flower at her temple. Her face was unbearably pale, so pale it was frightening. Xiang Rong did not understand, eldest sister, what are you doing? The matriarch was furious. As she tapped her cane on the ground, Chen Yu. What are you doing dressing like this? Chen Yu leisurely stepped forward and gave a slight salute before saying, Granddaughter is naturally going with grandmother to offer condolences to Lord Boo. Who told you to dress like this? Going to mourn, it is natural to wear white. Chen Yu spoke as if it were natural, that day, Lord Boo passed away. Chen Yu personally saw it. These days, so long as I close my eyes, I can remember the day's scene. It is a shock that is hard to endure, and I also cannot sleep. Chen Yu just thinks that if I do not properly offer my condolences for Lord Bu, then perhaps this will plague my conscience. With her saying it like this, the matriarch found it hard to continue blaming her. Thinking about it, it was the case. An unmarried girl had witnessed a person die before her. What sort of scare would that be? Originally, the matriarch was annoyed by Chen Yu, but in the blink of an eye, it became sympathy and pity. She could not help but take a couple steps forward and gently bait the back of Chen Yu's hand, good granddaughter. Do not be afraid. Today, we will go light a stick of incense for Lord Bu. After that, everything will be fine. Her voice was gentle, as though she were a kind grandmother. Feng Yuhen was disgusted with what she saw. This matriarch was greedy for money and material goods. She never had her own proper ideas. She and Feng Jinyuan were similar in that they both hoped that Chen Yu would excel and be able to ascend the treasured throne that they had dreamed of for many years. Turning around, Feng Yuhen pulled Xiang Rong and walked out of the manor. There were two carriages outside waiting. One was a normal carriage while the other was Chen Yu's personal use rosewood carriage. She pulled Xiang Rong and got in a normal carriage. After that, Chen Yu and the matriarch also left the manor. They heard Chen Yu invite the matriarch, Grandmother, come sit in granddaughter's carriage. This was originally meant to curry favor with the matriarch, but when she heard this, she felt very put off. She was the most honored and respect female in the family. Why did such a good carriage not belong to her? But this sin was not placed on Chen Yu's person. Instead, she internally cursed Chen Shi. Seeing the matriarch's expression turn for the worse, Chen Yu immediately understood. Thus, she supported the matriarch while saying, This carriage was something mother gave me for my birthday. Over these years, granddaughter felt reluctant to use it. Firstly, the wood used is expensive. Secondly, Chen Yu keeps thinking of how such a great item does not suit someone as young as me. I have always been thinking of giving it to grandmother. Grandmother having a personal use carriage is most suitable. If grandmother does not mind, please accept it. Today, Chen Yu is only able to sit with grandmother because I have been blessed by grandmother. Ever since Chen Shi died, the matriarch had not received any direct benefits. Today, Hearing that Chen Yu was going to give her this carriage, 
she immediately became alert. A smile surfaced on her face, with her wrinkles crashing together. She repeatedly said, Good. Good. It really is Chen Yu that is most filial. Chen Yu covered her smile and lowered her head, as she cursed the matriarch internally. The two carriages from the Feng family carried the four people towards the Bu Manor. Not an hour later, the carriages stopped. When the curtain was raised, they heard the sound of chanting sound. Before their eyes was a manner even more dignified than the Feng family's. For the Bu family's funeral, there was a large white funeral banner draped at the gate. They also invited ten Buddhist monks to chant sutras and perform ceremonies. When Huang Quan helped Feng Yu Heng, she quietly whispered into her ear, The Bu family's people are all outside. It seems they are waiting for someone. Feng Yu Hen paid attention and observed. Sure enough, everyone in the Bu family had come out of the manor, including someone she recognized, Bu Nishang. Each and every one of them appeared respectful and anxious. Before she could think, the Feng family's matriarch walked forward, with Chen Yu behind her. The Bu family's people glanced at them. Aside from a single person around Feng Jin Yuan's age, who advanced a couple steps, everyone else was clearly hostile. The man faced the matriarch and greeted her, taking the initiative to say, the elderly Madame Feng personally coming is our good fortune. Once these words came out, there were a few faint snorts from the members of the Bu family behind him, clearly disdainful. The man felt undignified. Turning around, he glared at them, and the members of the Bu family showed a bit of fear, as they lowered their heads. Feng Yuhen came to an understanding. Perhaps this one was the Bubei Ai Chi who had some relations with the Yao family, was head imperial concubine Bu's elder brother, and was Bu Nishang and Bu Kong's father. While she thought of this, Bubei Ai Chi looked towards her. In his gaze, she could see a lot of emotions, but he did not say anything. He only nodded as a greeting. Feng Yuhen saluted and heard the matriarch say, Lord Bu's passing was sudden and really causes people to mourn. Today, this old one brought along the three granddaughters to light some incense for Lord Bu. When Jin Yuan is finished with court duties today, he will come over. Bu Bei Ai Chi quickly bowed and gave his thanks. Glancing sideways, he saw Chen Yu's set of white clothing, especially the white flower at her temple. With that, he missed his father even more. He once again bowed deeply towards Chen Yu, many thanks eldest young Miss Feng. Chen Yu also returned a bow, immediately saying, Lord Bu is modest. This is something that ought to be done. Today, the Bu family's funeral is more important than anything else. Please, return to the manor. There is no need to gather so many people outside the manor to welcome people. Bu Bei Ai Chi was stunned, not understanding what Chen Yu meant. For a while, he was stunned in place. The Feng matriarch had similar thoughts to Chen Yu and followed up. That's right, quickly return to the morning hall. Just as these words came out, a few sounds of laughter came out from the crowd of Bu family's people. The matriarch's expression slightly sank, but before she could speak, a shrill announcement came from behind them head imperial concubine has arrived. In this moment, Feng Yu Hen and Xiang Rong laughed. The matriarch and Chen Yu timing had reached quite a high level. Everyone turned around in unison, facing the manor's road. From the west came a dignified palace carriage. On the carriage, there stood two palace maids dressed in white. Below, there was a eunuch. The announcement just now came from that eunuch. The members of the Bu family and the people who had come to offer condolences but could not enter the manor knelt down in unison. The Feng matriarch also pulled Chen Yu and knelt down while shooting a look over at Feng Yu Heng. Feng Yu Heng had never been one to argue over this sort of thing, so she followed Xiang Rong and knelt on the ground. She then slightly raised her eyes and saw the carriage stop with a stretcher being carried out. On the stretcher lay the severely injured head imperial concubine Bu Bei Ai Ping. With two strong eunuchs to carry the stretcher, they carefully exited the carriage. Bu Bei Ai Ping had been violently thrown by the emperor. Although her father had acted as a bit of a cushion, she had still injured all of the bones in her body. As for coming to her father's funeral, she could only do it in a stretcher. 
The faces of the Bu family turned dark upon seeing this scene. Bubeichi held his little sister dear. After paying respects and saluting her, he rose and went to her side. With tears in his eyes, he said, Imperial concubine. Bubeiping seeing the Bu family also felt quite emotional. Tears fell one by one, as she said, Brother, it is me that is unworthy of father. Don't say such things. Bubeiichi interrupted her, At this point, the Bu family does not blame anyone. Bubeiping also wore a set of white clothes, and on her head was a mourning cloth, but her brother's words does not blame anyone triggered something inside her. She suddenly turned her head, not caring for the pain. Gritting her teeth, she slightly raised her body a little, as she looked towards Feng Yu Heng. Bubeiichi said to himself not good and wanted to say something to change the subject, but he heard Bubeiping's voice was already stern and resolute her. Kill her kill her. She shouted herself hoarse. Her agitation caused the injuries on her body to hurt, which resulted in her being bathed in a cold sweat. Imperial concubine, do not get agitated. Taking care of your body is most important. The Boo family went forward and begged her while glaring at Feng Yu Heng. The things that happened at the banquet were known by everyone. The origin lay with Feng Yu Heng winning an archery competition over Bu Nishang. As an aunt and head imperial concubine, she had to vent her anger, so she began hitting imperial concubine Hu. As a result, she scared away imperial concubine Yan, who was about to make an appearance. Listening to it, the relations were quite messy, but it could all be traced back to Feng Yuheng. Thus, the Bu family's people began adding details to Bunishang's story. They always believed that it was Feng Yuheng that caused Lord Bu's death. Now that their head imperial concubine had been angered to this degree, how could the younger generation endure? Immediately, a few boys around around ten years old charged over, wanting to take action and hit Feng Yu Heng. As for Buna Shang, she also had vicious eyes and said to Bu Bei Ping, Auntie, we must get revenge for grandfather. When the boys rushed over towards Feng Yu Heng, it frightened the Feng matriarch terribly, but she did not go up and stop them. Instead, she only shouted A Heng, be careful. Feng Yu Heng, however, did not even move. She only stared at Bu Bei Qi, a hint of disdain in her eyes. Bu Bei Qi's face was red with embarrassment. He repeated shouted everyone get back here. What are you doing? He was Lord Bu's only son. With the elder dead, this family was naturally left to him. This shout was very loud, and the boys stopped before Feng Yu Heng. They then heard Feng Yu Heng say in an either loud nor quiet voice, listening is good. Listening will not lead to losses. I dare guarantee you this. Even if another eight or ten come, you will not be able to hurt me in the slightest. The matriarch also became furious, what is it your Bu family wants to do? She then looked at head imperial concubine Bu and said in confusion, might I ask head imperial concubine, what does Lord Bu's death have to do with our A Heng? This was the first time the matriarch used such a tone when speaking with a person of power. To say that she was not afraid was a lie, but she did find it a little enjoyable. It was not that she suddenly became more courageous, nor was it because she favored Feng Yu Heng. Instead, it was because she remembered that this head imperial concubine Bu was personally thrown by the emperor that smashed Lord Bu to death. As for her family's A Heng, she was permitted by the emperor to call him father emperor. With the relationships as they are, she naturally knew who had a better backing. Bu Bei Ping glared fiercely at Feng Yu Heng, completely ignoring the Feng matriarch, relation? If this one says there is one, then there is one. Bu Nishang was also to the side chipping in, father, could it be that we should not get revenge for grandfather? Brother. The one who caused father to die is just before us. What are you still waiting for? Bu Chi was given no other option by these two. He could not curse at the head imperial concubine, so he could only curse at his own daughter. He went all out and dragged Bu Nishang by the arm behind him, shut your mouth. But at this time, a voice faintly floated over that's right. Lord Bu was smashed to death by head imperial concubine. If the Bu family does not get revenge, 
Then how will Lord Pooh find peace in the netherworld?